or produce a tornado. It still may rotate in just above the surface, but even if it doesn't produce a tornado, there are going to be wind gusts 50, 60, perhaps up to 70 miles per hour. And as I mentioned, this is really just the beginning of an active few hours for us. We were timing this after 8 o'clock, more in that 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. time frame as this line of storms will move very quickly once it gets going, and it's going to start to get going here in the next few minutes, um, move from west to east across the state between now and 1 a.m., bringing with it the threat of severe weather. So Live Doppler 13 radar, the reason we're on with you now is because of tornado warnings that have been issued for White County, uh, and it looks like we've got some additional severe thunderstorm warnings. So I'm going to give you a close-up view as we monitor these storms that are approaching and just northwest of Lafayette. Also want to point out, storms just across the state line north of Terre Haute, so Vermilion County. Heads up, you've got a couple of storms your, your way. Uh, Sullivan County, we're going to have to watch this cell. That's a tornado warned cell in the southeastern sections of Illinois. So let's go back to the northwestern part of our area where we're monitoring this complex here. Non-severe, but you've got some rain, uh, maybe some lightning with this Frankfurt over toward Elwood north of Levin and back through Crawfordsville, but it's this area here that we're concerned with the potential for rotating storms that may in fact produce tornadoes. They have a history of that across portions of Illinois. Um, new severe thunderstorm warning, that's going to be for parts of Tippecanoe County until 1030. Um, also over toward the Delphi area, Carroll County, you're also under that severe thunderstorm warning until 1030. And I'll remind you um, <clears throat> that oftentimes when we have a tornado watch, which we do until 3 a.m. and we get severe thunderstorm warnings uh, posted, that the sirens will sound. Those are only meant for outdoor use, so we want to make sure that you have ways to get warnings if you're inside, and, and hopefully with the storms approaching, you have made your way inside and, and hopefully to a, a safe place as we monitor these cells that will move across northern Tippecanoe into Carroll County's severe thunderstorm warnings until 1030, but keep in mind with the tornado watch, those sirens may in fact sound, and then it is a, a, a tornado warning for White County. That's going to go until 1015. That circulation just now approaching the southwestern sections of the county, and this is going to move very quickly off to the north and east. Tornado warning for White County, including Monticello, until 1015. It has been an active day of weather. Unfortunately, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas hard hit today. There are pictures and videos of uh, massive tornadoes across eastern Iowa. This setup has finally made its way into the central portions of Indiana, at least it will between now and 1 a.m. as we track these storms very quickly off to the northeast. They're traveling at about 50 miles per hour, and as this line uh, continues to develop and sets up, we may see that forward speed increase, which would also increase our threat of damaging winds over the next several hours. And Sean, that appears to be one of, of, of the biggest threats over the next couple of hours. Uh, and an embedded tornado can't be ruled out either. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is it's, it's almost like pick your poison here. I, I had tweeted out earlier about um, don't get too fixated on the word tornado out of tornado watch because it doesn't matter what's going to do damage uh, to your home or your property, and I would argue that the, the odds of you getting over 70 mile per hour wind within a thunderstorm is going to be much greater uh, than tornadoes. With that said, uh, yes, that uh, storm that's moving into White County right now, and these things are moving fast. They might even be moving faster than 50 miles per hour because what we are showing you on Live Doppler 13 radar is essentially going to be out of the state by 1.30 a.m. So that means generally their speeds will probably be in excess of 50. Uh, what may happen too is if we start to get into some of these stronger gusts, we may get into what's called destructive thunderstorm warnings. We have those up in place around Chicago right now. As of right now, we don't have them in uh, central Indiana. That is subject to change here. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we are doing live coverage because of tornado warnings uh, that are up for White County right now on a storm that has a history of producing tornadoes. It's produced as many as three so far. Those were a little bit earlier. We'll have to wait and see if we get any damage reports out of Benton County. Hopefully that's not the case. Uh, but radar velocity, um, and now this is, this is kind of an interesting area of our state in the sense that um, but it's, it's kind of in a weird zone between the Chicago radar, the Northwestern Indiana radar, the Indianapolis radar. So when we show you wind velocity products, they're not 
they're not even, you know, close to the surface, but we know there's definitely strong circulation within this. Now, um, when I did, my, did the storm track for Angela earlier, and we'll do it again now, uh, because we're starting to see several circulations within this, this uh, complex of storms that's uh, blasting through. We're going to be crossing I-65 um, near Remington and not too far from Battleground. Battleground actually under a severe thunderstorm warning, Delphi under a severe thunderstorm warning. And you can see, let me, let me just highlight some of these areas of circulation. But again, this whole storm uh, complex could produce severe wind. We're just picking out and circling some of the, the areas uh, where we're seeing rotation, which could cause an enhancement to that. Uh, you see it there near Round Grove. Uh, heads up Chalmers, Monticello and Reynolds, Walcott, uh, Brookston, be in your safe locations. Lowest level, away from windows. Um, now I will tell you that our atmospheric setup here is completely different than what was happening earlier today. Um, back to our west and our northwest, unfortunately it still is strong enough, the wind fields are strong enough uh, to be able to support some of these uh, pockets of rotation. So let's go ahead. Let me uh, pull radar out just a little bit. Eventually, I think we may get some additional warnings. Whether or not they're going to be a uh, severe thunderstorm or tornado doesn't really matter, but heads up there in Cass County and uh, likely there in Miami County as well as we go down the road. And it won't take long. Uh, you know, these things are going to be moving quickly. This, this severe weather window for us tonight is going to be uh, very brief in nature. From now and uh, maybe we're talking the next two, two and a half hours. Uh, this thing is, will then be done. Okay, so there's the latest ETAs for these. I'll take it out a little farther with this, this uh, heavy storm complex that's pushing through there. So um, Chalmers less than uh, five minutes, Brookston less than five minutes, Reynolds less than eight minutes. That's on the leading edge here. Delphi about 15 minutes, give or take there. And, uh, you know, less than an less than a half an hour, I'd say, from to, to get to Royal Center. With That's with the, the tornado warning portion of this. Of course, we've got additional storms, some of which are um, uh, under warning as well as we go a little farther to the south and southwest. Um, so this is the, what we've been talking about, what uh, the team has been tracking all week long, and now we are kind of getting into the teeth of this. Uh, you can see additional storms there uh, crossing the border. And uh, but these will be in the metro area just because they're moving so fast. Probably within an hour, what you're seeing west of Terre Haute will be around the metro area because of their forward speeds uh, moving so quickly, Angela. So it's uh, just a, you know again matter of about a you know an hour, maybe no more than that uh, around the metro area. I suspect if they hold together, uh, we will get some warnings. But that is the question mark because. It's a race against time. The atmosphere uh, locally, especially from central and eastern Indiana, will be uh, stabilizing as this, this front be, uh, begins to move in. And whether or we just can't say for sure whether or not they're going to be able to survive, but we have to uh, uh, definitely deserves our attention until we can get this line through. Yes, and our attention we will give it and uh, yes, hope that they don't survive in terms of, of the tornadic cells. Uh, again, this is going to be a, a story that is talked about much like last weekend when we had the severe storms move through Mississippi, deadly tornadoes, uh, a similar setup across parts of Arkansas today. There were big tornadoes across parts of Iowa as well. This will be a national story moving forward as uh, several communities will be cleaning up from severe storms. Um, Sean was kind of pointing out those several areas of circulation. We can also kind of pinpoint that with our shear detector here on live Doppler 13 radar, uh, approaching the Brookston area not too far away from Monticello. And Sean did that kind of extended track to show you from Monticello and then gave you a heads up Royal Center and Logansport, that cell is going to eventually move your way. The tornado warning for White County goes until 10:15. We'll go back to the traditional view of the radar 
as we monitor uh, and the, the intense storms right now from uh, the Remington area along Interstate 65 south to Brookston. Uh, Monticello, you're now on the leading edge of that heavy rain that we kind of tracked as our coverage got underway with the potential for damaging winds and perhaps some rotation still developing back to your west, but just a little bit. Sean mentioned these are moving very quickly off to the northeast, 50, maybe 60 miles per hour, and they will continue to move in that direction. So heads up, Monon Royal Center, eventually Logansport. Uh, Delphi, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning along with battleground thanks to this complex of storms. But the rotating part of this cell looks to be just to your northwest um, battleground and Delphi, which most likely is the reason the National Weather Service went severe thunderstorm warning and not tornado warning. Um, let's come out a little bit uh, because we want to show you we've got non severe uh, here from just north of Crawfordsville over toward um, Frankfurt and Elwood. I've taken the lightning off just because it's so difficult to see when we get so much lightning on, on what we um, are actually dealing with, but I'll, I'll throw it back on. Uh, plenty of lightning with those severe storms prompting the tornado warnings and the severe thunderstorm warnings. A lot of lightning just across the state line near Danville, Illinois, and we do have some lightning, lightning but non-severe here across parts of Clinton County to um, northern Hamilton County over toward the Elwood areas. We get into southern Madison County, but I do want to point out some of the cells that are developing now just across the state line that have gone severe thunderstorm warnings on. This is near Danville and just south of there. So if you're familiar with the area um, in eastern Illinois, just kind of west and northwest of Terre Haute, we're going to be monitoring these to move toward Vermilion County eventually into Crawfordsville and most likely will impact Lafayette as well. This line extends south, so we will go there with live Doppler 13 radar and one other that we'll watch closely. And again, they've issued severe thunderstorm warnings for the line uh, across parts of Illinois in if you're familiar with the Effingham area, but we do have one individual cell that is under a tornado warning that we'll have to watch for the southwestern part of our area, perhaps southwest of Terre Haute in the next uh, half hour, 40 minutes. So most likely this is just the beginning of what's going to be an active several hours for us as uh, the line of severe storms will move quickly from west to east and should clear the state by about one o'clock. Um, the ingredients in play for severe storms, we had lots of that come together, especially from Iowa south to Arkansas. Um, and we still have plenty of that in play for central Indiana. Winds changing direction as you go up in the atmosphere. We're lacking on a couple, which we're keeping our fingers crossed, will, will prevent us from a widespread tornadic outbreak. But I don't think at this point we're going to escape that threat for damaging winds as these storms pick up forward speed and move quickly from west to east across the state. Damaging winds going to be a real threat. Remember, we consider any wind 58 miles per hour or higher severe, and we could be staring down 60, 70 miles per hour winds uh, associated with some of these cells and that can do as much damage as the lower end tornadoes. So we want to make sure that you take every warning seriously this evening, uh, tornado and severe thunderstorm warning and a quick reminder that oftentimes we do get sirens going if we're under a tornado watch and we have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, the warnings that we have now that have prompted our live continuous coverage for the Monticello area and White County, that's a tornado warning until 1015. Severe thunderstorm warnings for the Delphi area back toward Brookston, so just north of Lafayette. That goes until 1030 this evening, and then eventually we'll see this complex kind of track off to uh, the northeast headed toward Logansport. Now, I'm not going to put a track on the rotating part of this of these cells, and when we think there are a couple of areas of rotation, but I'm going to put a track kind of on the leading edge just to kind of give you a heads up of where these storms are actually going to go next and whether they produce severe winds or tornadoes, uh, that is going to be a, a threat and a concern for us over the next um, several hours. This little complex here, so we'll just track, I'm going to just track the leading edge of the heavy rain, so not necessarily the rotating part, and this goes off quickly, we think between 50 and 60 miles per hour, so we'll just kind of split the difference there. Um, Burnettsville and Royal Center, you will be in the path. Monticello, you've got the heavy rain and the lightning overhead with that damaging wind threat just now minutes away, uh, but you can see this quickly moves off to the north and east into Royal Center, eventually into uh, Logansport and Peru, so we're just kind of giving you an early 
really heads up on where we expect these storms to go over the next um, 15 minutes or so. And they are moving quickly off to the northeast. This is an active line of storms and prompting several warnings from tornado to severe thunderstorm from northwestern Indiana through the southeastern sections of Illinois. And this line will continue to move from west to east and have a local impact uh, this evening, Sean. Uh, so now all of uh, White County under a uh, tornado warning. There's two separate ones um, now. The one that we initially or were on for, but now um, the northern flank of this storm uh, has produced enough rotation to warrant the tornado warning. And so that's why we've got uh, two separate polygons, two separate tornado uh, warning polygons. Again, either way, um, I'm, you know, I'm concerned at minimum we're going to have uh, wind damage out of this. But as we go back on live Doppler 13 radar with this particular storm, and you can look over in Illinois, uh, you can see these uh, tornado icons here. So this is the same storm uh, produced a tornado just north of Champaign, Illinois, and it's produced, we believe, as many as three. Um, rotation still embedded within this storm. Um, as it moves in, uh, it's, it's right into Monticello as we speak here. Let's uh, look at the North Webster radar. And uh, we'll use a product that we, that we uh, call shear rate, and it basically takes a lot of the, the wind imagery and just kind of simplifies it. So where you see these shades of green that are over Chalmers now that are just east of Brookston, um, within that we can get this <coughs> the, the wind mixed down to the surface here. So uh, it's on your doorstep there in Monticello and Monon heading toward Royal Center. This is heading toward Logansport and um, still <coughs> a concern for the western half of the state for these additional cells here, um, especially that one that is to the southwest of Terre Haute. It's ahead of the main line um, and you can see that they've issued a warning for that entire line. That will eventually come into play for the rest of our viewing area, uh, but we'll have to monitor the cell in advance of that. Those can be sometimes much stronger than the line itself. Either way, uh, we've got, uh, you know, at, we got about two, two and a half hours between now and roughly 1 a.m., give or take, uh, that we're gonna have to get through uh, these warnings here. And it may be a situation when you're uh, under a severe thunderstorm warning that you might just wanna go ahead and treat that uh, like a tornado warning tonight. With that said, speaking of the tornado warning, it won't last much longer because just because of the how fast these storms are going. So there's the rotation now. Um, it will be out of, it's going to be out of White County probably by 1030, just based on the forward speed there. Whether or not we get additional tornado warnings for Cass County to be determined, but if it were me and I'm in Logansport, I'm waiting this thing out. Uh, you can see a little bit of the rotation tightening up now. They're just to the west of Monticello. Uh, so I'll, I'll dive in. We'll circle this for you. That right there um, could, you know, and it's a situation where we can't tell you for sure whether or not this thing's going to produce a tornado. But um, that's what that's why we have had the warning issued for this because of the history of this particular storm. Let's do another track on this. And we'll start all the way just north of uh, Monon, go all the way down to near Battleground. And we're going to take this out about 55 miles per hour. And I'm going to extend the watch or the uh, track box. Let's make it a, let's make it a full hour here. So uh, again, these things are moving very, very fast. Uh, they won't be in our viewing area. This particular storm won't be in our viewing area very long either. Uh, with that said, Logansport, less than a half an hour, Royal Center. Uh, less than uh, 20 minutes, Delphi less than five. And um, on, Mon on Monon and on Mo Monticello uh, as we speak. I would suspect based on uh, what, I'm, what I'm analyzing here, uh, Angela, is that uh, it's gonna be a more difficult call for the, what kind of shape these storms mm -hmm. are gonna be in when they get to, to Indianapolis. Um, but certainly in Western um, Western Indiana, if you're, if you're west of I-65, there's a greater tornado potential there. All of us are kind of in the same boat when it comes to uh, severe wind potential. Well, and I like what you said. You, we really should be treating all warnings, severe thunderstorm and or tornado, um, as potentially producing a tornado. Remember, we are under a tornado watch until 3 a.m. 
Even with a severe thunderstorm warning, that storm could quickly, with little to no notice, uh, rotate and produce a tornado. So we really do need to treat every warning like a tornado warning. Just stay away from windows and doors. Be in the center part of your home in lowest level until these storms push off to the east. Did get confirmation that the sirens did sound in Monticello, White County, when that tornado warning was issued. And uh, we've got a couple of tornado warnings covering all of White County till 10, 15, 10, 30 or so. And then just south of there, uh, severe thunderstorm warnings. And it looks like now we've got some additional severe thunderstorm warnings for the western part of the state, which isn't surprising. We were tracking these storms um, in Illinois, and they were producing uh, so at least that potential for severe winds. And right now we've got some new areas under warnings, and we were mentioning you, Vermilion County, and you are now under a severe thunderstorm warning until 1045. This is also going to include northern park counties, so northern park uh, Southern Fountain and uh, basically the northern sections of Vermilion counties until 1045 with the tornado watch. You may hear siren sound even with this severe thunderstorm warning, but we'll kind of give you an even closer view, point out some of the smaller areas that are in the path. So from Covington to Perrysville to Newport in northern Vermilion over toward Kingman, uh, that's going to be in Park and Fountain counties and then just uh, north of Rockville. So in this area, you are now under a severe thunderstorm thunderstorm morning until 1045. This one will also move northeast very quickly. So heads up Wayne Town, Linden, Crawfordsville, Newmarket. This batch of thunderstorms that is just now coming out of eastern Illinois uh, may in fact produce some severe winds for you in the next uh, half hour or so. And while we're here, I'm going to track the leading edge, so not necessarily where we have the severe wind potential, but I just want to make sure you you know well ahead of time that this the cell is coming your way. So we'll do a quick track on it um, just to give you some of the times of arrival of kind of the the strongest part of the storm in terms of we'll just pick up on the higher returns, the areas of red here, uh, plenty of lightning associated with this, and we'll do a, a quick track to show you that these are again moving northeast at um, we think near 50, 60 miles per hour easily. Um, it's into Kingman now, the leading edge, but as this kind of tracks off to the north and east, uh, we'll go, Sean did 56, so we'll do 56. Uh, it'll be Wayne Town in nine minutes, Wingate in 11, New Richmond in 16. So we just want to make sure that you're weather aware. Uh, treat this thunderstorm as it has the potential for damaging winds. And with that tornado watch also in play, uh, a quick spin up can't be completely ruled out. Sean pointed out we do have uh, the ingredients in place, especially across the western part of the state, to support tornadoes uh, in the next um, half hour or hour or so. Let's clear this track and then we'll, we'll reset and uh, show you what we're dealing with because it really is just the beginning. Um, the severe thunderstorm warnings, the new ones issued for Vermilion Park and Fountain, um, and then we have the additional severe thunderstorm warnings north of Lafayette, and then those tornado warnings up toward the Monticello area. I want to point out they're continuing a tornado warning up to the state line uh, just south of Terre Haute. So if you're in the Sullivan area, uh, heads up if you're watching our coverage. This storm has been under a tornado warning for at least an hour, and it's an individual storm ahead of the main line that could be a potentially even more dangerous. So we'll We'll, we'll watch this one closely, but that tornado warning now up to the state line just to the west of Sullivan looks like that would track just south of the Terre Haute area. Um, let's go to the north where our, our coverage started with those tornado warnings for White County, and those do continue at this point. Uh, the heavy cells are over Monticello now, and while we're here, we'll check our shear product, and again, that's this is just a a way for us to kind of pinpoint where we have the, the potential for rotation and damaging winds. And that's basically right over and now pushing east of Monticello. So heads up, Logansport, this is quickly going to move your way. Delphi, we're picking up a little bit. You're not under a tornado warning, but you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Winds could be picking up gusts 50, 60 miles per hour, perhaps, with these storms as they race off to the east across portions of uh, Carroll County. So Delphi over toward Deer Creek, uh, Logansport, you're not under a warning yet, but you can kind of see what's coming your way. Let's keep the shear product on uh, just as we move south um, and pick up. Uh, so into Attica, 
there's the storm and I'm going to remove the lightning. Obviously, these storms are going to contain lots of lightning and, and that's a threat. And now that we've lost daylight, really difficult to see severe weather in the dark and really at this point shouldn't be heading out to, to look for severe weather. It's just simply too dangerous. Um, but we do have at least a little bit of shear being detected um, south of Covington. So in northern Vermilion County uh, to just northwest of Park, northwest of Rockville. So in between Covington and Rockville can't rule out those winds reaching severe limits and perhaps may rotate. But at this point, National Weather Service has gone severe thunderstorm morning for Attica south to Covington to just north of Rockville. But heads up, Crawfordsville Lafayette, that is just to your west. And these are moving 50, 60 miles per hour. So they are going to move quick, quickly your way. In terms of shear to the south, we'll just wait and see uh, with what happens with that cell that's now just across the state line southwest of Terre Haute that continues to prompt a tornado warning. Uh, so this is what we're dealing with. The line of storms that we've been talking about all evening long has arrived, triggering a severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings. And really, this is just the beginning. We expect warnings from west to east across the state between now and 1 a.m. And actually, I've got a new severe thunderstorm warning for you. This is going to be north of Lafayette. And this is going to include Logansport. So we've been talking about you, Logansport, with the storm that's um, moving now just east of Monticello, that it was coming your way, and it's now on your doorstep. So Logansport, Peru, new severe thunderstorm warnings for you. Uh, time on this is going to be, let's get you the, the expiration time on this one. Uh, so it's going to be Cass County until 1045 and parts of Miami County until 1045. So the cell that prompted the uh, tornado warning for White County and Monticello moving quickly off to the east, headed your way, Logansport and Peru. Thinking now, at least National Weather Service has gone severe thunderstorm warning and not tornado warning. But as we've been talking about, we want you to treat these um, with extra caution tonight, simply because we are under that tornado watch until 3 a.m. And with little to no warning, we could go from a severe storm to a quick spin up of um, a low end tornado. So we want to make sure that you realize that threat. And even if it doesn't spin, uh, straight line wind damage, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour can do as much damage as a low end tornado. So uh, please keep that in mind. For moving, this one is now, again, we, not a surprise, moving about 65 miles an hour wow. to the east. So, oh, so I, they did update that from the Weather Service? Yeah, yeah. So okay. this is, uh, yeah, so there's the, the I, I, did a, I did a swath on this whole storm complex, basically, the leading edge of this, if you will. So east at 65, some ETAs there, less than a half an hour in Peru. Um, we've got you at 15 minutes in uh, Logansport and Royal Center at about 30 minutes, and we're getting an update there. So again, these are so fast moving. That's why it's not going to take long for this stuff to get out of the state here. Um, treat this entire Get, treat the severe thunderstorm warning like a tornado warning tonight, okay, just be, based on this, the forward speed. Uh, within this, we're getting some pockets. Um, we're getting some spin, you know, enhanced uh, rotation, if you will, just to the east of Monticello. That's going to be moving into Logansport here. Um, if it, you know, again, we had you 15 minutes, so um, go ahead safe spot middle of the middle of the structure you're in lowest level get away from trees and we are fully expecting that we're going to get additional warnings and there you go and so all right so we got a new tornado warning that's for that cell that's in southeastern illinois and i was about to tweet out of of the storms that we're showing you on live doppler 13 radar that is the one that has the likeliest uh best potential, if you will, to produce a, not only a tornado, but possibly a, a strong tornado. So uh, this, this warning is going to include parts of Clay and Green counties, technically out of the WTHR viewing area, um, but we're going to give you folks a heads up there. This goes until 11 p.m. This will include Sullivan, this will include Jasonville and Linton, and if this thing holds together, then we're going to see this warning extended this tornado warning polygon uh, extended farther east to include um, Owen County and maybe parts of uh, Monroe County. Again, if it holds together, um, feel pretty confident, however, that it's going to hold its own there in uh, in western uh, southwestern Indiana. So um, let's uh, let's track this out.
and I was just about to do this uh, a moment ago. And so that's, um, we're, we're going to put it at about 65 miles per hour. And I'm going to take this out for an hour. And so again, there's some, there's some potential there. Uh, less than an hour in Bloomfield, Jasonville at 25 minutes, uh, Sullivan within, uh, within 15 minutes, the rotation with this. And this will be the cell that we'll have to watch because it's the ones out in advance of the, of the squall line that, that would have the greatest um, probability produce a tornado. Although we could see some embedded within the line too. Glad you did that track because y you mentioned Monroe County. So Bloomington, this is your time to be thinking, OK, I know where to go if this warning is issued for me and, and be ready to put that plan into action in the next half hour, 45 minutes to an hour. If in fact it stays tornadic, what I was hoping is this line would catch up to that individual cell and kind of merge and turn into more of a high wind damaging wind threat. But right now it's holding its own and it's one that we were monitoring very closely just southwest of Terre Haute um, into uh, the eastern sections of Illinois. So just heads up um, if you're south of Terre Haute from Sullivan over toward Bloom field. Uh, this is going to eventually impact you and Ellettsville, Bloomington. Let's keep a very close eye on what we've got going on across the eastern sections of Illinois. It has been an active afternoon and evening already with severe storms. We had that from Iowa south through Missouri into Arkansas. Uh, really some devastating damage coming out of the Little Rock area and there were some massive uh, tornadoes pictures and video coming out of Iowa. Now this line is basically on um, on our doorstep. We've got rain and storms prompting warnings for the northwestern part of our area and some individual cells just across the state line and these will race from west to east. We are under a tornado watch until 3 a.m. Don't be surprised even with a severe thunderstorm warning if the sirens sound, but we can't stress this enough. Those are meant for outdoor use. You have to have ways to get warnings inside, whether it's from your cell phone, watching channel 13, uh, having a weather radio. Those are all great tools and those are meant for indoor use. But just want to remind you, even if it's a severe thunderstorm warning, you would happen to hear the sirens. Those are often triggered when we also have a tornado watch in play and that goes until 3 a.m. Uh, you can see the warnings here really lined up with this line of severe storms from tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings northwest to that new tornado warning that Sean just pointed out uh, south of Terre Haute and this line will move quickly from west to east. The tornado watch technically goes until 3 a.m. Our thinking is still that this is going to race out of here by about 1 a.m. We saw an increase in our severe weather outlook earlier today. This doesn't happen very often on our scale of one to five. Central Indiana earlier today from the Storm Prediction Center was put at a four and that moderate risk and again doesn't happen very often uh, and that's the reason we want to continue to make sure that you're weather aware. Uh, the watch means it's possible. We've been under that for the last couple of hours. The warning means it's been detected or it's been spotted on radar and that's the time you put your safety plan into action. Mentioned you Bloomington and Ellettsville. We want you to watch closely that storm that's developing down to your south and west. Um, if you have a basement, that's obviously the safest place to go. But I always tell students when we're talking in schools, don't worry. If you don't have a basement, you can pick a closet or a bathroom somewhere in the middle of your home away from windows and doors. You want to put as many walls between you and the outside as you can when you're dealing with severe storms that could produce uh, straight line winds, 60, 70 mile per hour winds or that threat for a rotating storm uh, like a tornado. And, and both are in play over the next uh, several hours. Uh, we've been tracking this with Future Track 13 uh, all evening long, and we still expect this line to move from west to east across the state and then completely clear the state by about 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. But what's going to be left behind? Very strong winds. We could be dealing with additional power outages if we don't get any from the severe storms tonight from 50 plus mile per hour winds that will be gusting on the back side of this storm system. So even tomorrow, we're not going to be dealing with the severe threat, but we're going to be dealing with some very strong winds, falling temperatures, and, and maybe a couple of spotty showers. Uh, let's get you caught up on all of the warnings, and we're going to start with that new warning.
to the south of Terre Haute. And this is the new tornado warning that Sean uh, tracked for us. This includes Sullivan and Linton. Yes, sir. I think I think we can probably radar confirm this thing down okay. there now. Unfortunately, that's what I was hoping not to do. But uh, based on what I'm seeing on on live Doppler 13 radar there, and what you're looking at, uh, yeah. So there, yeah, there you go. So now they've now that warning polygon has been uh, upgraded to a confirmed tornado warning. Uh, so this includes Sullivan. It is not far from you. Let me circle the confirmation that they're that they're seeing that to upgrade that warning. It's right here. Okay. This is a product that we, the technical term is correlation coefficient. It's we like to call it the debris detector. Um, so if you're not familiar with this particular product, basically the radar can tell us that what it is seeing is not rain, uh, it's picking up non-meteorological targets. So in, in this case, it's picking up possibly trees or uh, shingles or things like that. Uh, so we know that, it's, that it's, it's doing damage, unfortunately. And so that's why they've, they've, they've upgraded this. And you can see this is the radar velocity. It's a, that's the strongest signature that we have, at least I've seen in, in our state or nearing our state, if you will. Um, so this, can't stress it enough, Sullivan, Jasonville, Linton, if you're, you're watching us or if you have friends that are down there, give them a call, let them know uh, that there's a confirmed tornado that's going to be crossing the state line here uh, within five minutes. And this particular, these cells are going to be moving east at about 65 miles per hour. So, and we want you to also, if you're in Bloomington, if you're in Martinsville, we want you to stay with us on coverage too because um, again, it's this, let me, let me pull live Doppler 13 radar back out. It's this lone cell that's in advance of the line. Now, could we get it spin up on the, the line itself? We could, but it's this lone cell that will have the greatest tornado potential and the greatest, uh, I think, threat of producing a strong tornado is what we're seeing right now unfold here. So um, we'll have to watch this closely until it can get ingested into the line which it eventually will, um, this, thing, this thing is going to be uh, the storm of the hour. And um, it's the one that's going to cause the most concern for us here. Yeah, and, and you hate to see that, that purple box kind of highlight the fact that it is a, a confirmed tornado at tornado warning at this point um, approaching the Sullivan area. Jasonville, Linton, heads up. This cell is moving your way. And when Sean was analyzing uh, the velocities with this uh, fairly intense couplet, uh, that red and green kind of close together, uh, most intense I've seen locally. So we would just want to make sure that you're in the safest part of your home, a uh, lowest level away from windows and doors as this moves across uh, the Sullivan area into Jasonville and Linton. It will eventually move toward Bloomfield. Heads up, Spencer, Ellettsville, Bloomington, Clear Creek. Uh, Sean even mentioned Martinsville. This is the time to think, okay, when this warning comes my way, where am I going and how quickly can I get there? Because you want to make sure you're in the safest part of your home as we're now dealing with a confirmed tornado warning across the southwestern part of our viewing area. Let's come out just a little bit um, and go north. We um, have this severe thunderstorm warning for an intense storm that's just south of Petersburg, uh, right between Petersburg and Kingman. This is moving into Wayne Town right now with heavy rain, lots of lightning, potential for damaging winds. Hail can't be ruled out. Uh, and this one tracking northeast, Linden, Crawfordsville, Newmarket, you will eventually be next. Um, our coverage, oh well, and I, as I say that, National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm warning for you, Montgomery County, until 1045 because of the storm that is coming out of Kingman in Wayne Town now and moving off to the north and east. Severe thunderstorm warning for Montgomery County. That's going to go until 1045 and is also going to include Clarks Hill, so southeastern parts of uh, Tippecanoe County. So uh, that's our new severe thunderstorm warning. Let's go north. Lafayette, you've got uh, storms overhead at this point, um, non severe. Our coverage started with uh, the tornado warning for White County and Monticello. Um, did get a report out of Monticello and White County of some strong winds, lots of rain, lots of lightning. Um, 
this person didn't report any damage, so that's some good news. We do have our newsroom checking on power outages and any damage reports that might be coming into us. Uh, Royal Center, Logansport, the storms are now uh, your way. Uh, appear to be weakening just a little bit, which is some good news. But while we're here, we'll check that shear detector. Just gives us an idea of uh, where we may have some rotation and or the potential for some damaging winds. And we've got that right over uh, the Logansport area. And with uh, a little pocket, Brookston, in between Brookston and Battleground, and a little bit over Lafayette. Nothing very strong at this point. Um, but just be aware, all of this area, these boxes here, as I've got kind of the big view of the radar off and just analyzing here the shear detector, you can see the amount of warnings we're, we're dealing with. Uh, that secondary tornado warning that was issued for Northern White still technically in effect, although that's moving out of our viewing area. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warnings are now lined up from Logan's port to Peru, and then we've got the new one for Crawfordsville, uh, Fountain Vermilion, Park, you're also under severe thunderstorm warnings and picking up a little bit of um, a little spike here on our shear detector uh, near Wayne Town. And this was the storm that we were analyzing when we gave you a heads up Crawfordsville and Linden and that warning came out. Um, so while we're here, we'll check the velocities too. Uh, but this is definitely picking up on the fact that uh, we have a damaging wind potential. Nothing very tight in terms of um, uh, the velocities at this point, uh, but still that potential for some damaging winds here uh, approaching the Wayne Town area that will move quickly toward Crawfordsville. Let's stay on the velocities and we'll just go south um, and pick up the area that is now under uh, the new tornado warning. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be this area here, Sean. You watching this one still? Obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. it's uh, yeah. It's it's a confirmed. Okay. Uh, it's a confirmed tornado. Unfortunately, it's it's done some damage uh, in the town of Robinson, Illinois. Um, it's going to be in Sullivan. Uh, let's do a track on this. I mean, this one, this one puts a pit in your stomach here because uh, there's just nothing we can do about it other than warn people down there and have you know people that are watching us call their their friends and family that live in there and hopefully they can take shelter. Um, but this is this is about as strong of a, a, a signature that I've seen uh, in quite a while in our in our viewing area. So can't stress this enough. Uh, if you're in this flashing polygon, which is a confirmed tornado warning polygon, we need you to get in that safe spot and you need to do it quickly. Um, it'll be in Jasonville. Uh, in less than 20 minutes, it's going to be in Sullivan. I'd probably argue in less than five minutes. So your your time is ticking. Uh, please get in the safe location here. Um, we we know that this is has done damage, and from a radar perspective, still showing. Let me take the track off very quickly. Um, so this again, this is a what we call debris detector, and so when. I'm circling this area here. That is debris that's from the tornado that went through the town of Robinson. Uh, and that is a large debris signature, by the way. That is not a small one. I'm going to take this back in time. And so you can see how it's, and it's, it's been a long track too. And so those are the concerns. So this thing's been going for, for quite a bit and the, the debris signature on radar has actually grown in time as well. I'm just going to do, let's see here. I mean, you know, so that that's showing, a, you know, a, a, a three mile, three and a half mile debris signature. Not saying the tornado's three miles wide, but uh, this is a very intense um, velocity, not only velocity signature, but also uh, the tornado debris signature. So this gives us basically what I'm trying to tell you. This gives us very high confidence that this is this is doing damage, and our only we can only hope that it cycles and dissipates before it reaches some of these towns that you see in front of it. And we're talking about Sullivan and Jasonville and Linton there. So let's just hope uh, that that will be the case. Yes, but it's still, as you've been pointing out, still ahead <coughs> of the main line of storms. So you can see the main line here 
from um, Delphi and Logansport into Lafayette, approaching Crawfordsville, and then back through eastern Illinois. But this was an individual storm. And if you've been watching our coverage leading up to this event, we had cautioned you about these individual storms that develop in their own environment that aren't being robbed from the big line, that those have the, the, the greater potential to go severe, to go tornadic, and that appears to be the case now with a confirmed tornado warning coming across the state line uh, into the Sullivan area, Linton, Bloomfield, Jasonville, you will be in the path, and I'm going to get you a close-up view of that in, in just a second. Some of the other damage reports, we don't have a lot of power outages reported from the newsroom yet, but there were, um, with the storms that moved through uh, Monticello in that area and then just northwest of there in the Remington area. So Interstate 65, 200, the 201 mile marker, which is that Remington exit uh, near Lowell, so north of our viewing area, reports of multiple semis that had been blown over. Uh, that happened at about 1015. Uh, that report came in at 1015, most likely happened before that. Um, so just be aware, even if you don't get into a, a tornadic cell, these winds are, uh, can do as much damage as a low-end tornado. And, and what Sean has been showing us with the storm that's now south of Terre Haute, with that debris signature, most likely that one is doing damage. So this is going to be our first stop. And we're going to go into the Sullivan area. Uh, Sullivan in the southwestern part of the state, that storm has reached you. You still have a few minutes. Cass, Jasonville, uh, Linton, although the circulation Linton looks to stay just north of you, but I still, you're in this area of a confirmed tornado warning. Be in the safest part of your home. That's going to be the lowest level away from windows and doors. And then heads up, uh, Clay City, Worthington, Spencer, Gosport, um, Martinsville, Ellisville, Bloomington. We're going to have to watch this storm closely. If it doesn't get into that line that it's, that's west of it, uh, this is a cell that may continue to track as a tornado for us over the next um, half hour, 45 minutes or so. So we're just going to have to watch this one very closely as We've been detecting some uh, debris or damage associated with this storm. And obviously, the National Weather Service, not quite, haven't been able to get on the National Weather Service chat if they actually had spotters in the area. But there was damage in Illinois with this storm. That's the reason they've gone uh, confirmed tornado. And based on what we're seeing with live Doppler 13 radar, that's the case as well. Uh, let's go north. Uh, nothing severe here, but we do have uh, some rain. Uh, new severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, that potential, not because of what you're dealing with now, but because of what's in eastern Illinois. New warnings for Clinton, Terre Haute, Rockville, Brazil, and Greencastle. That's going to be a severe thunderstorm warning, and that warning is um, a, a fairly large warning because, again, uh, yes, Yeah, well, um, I mentioned the, the damage report that we got from the newsroom. We do have an in-dot camera up in that area, um, and it shows a semi off the road there. So if you happen to have to go out in the next, you know, two hours, two and a half hours, you're really going to be contending with a, a dangerous setup, even if there aren't tornadoes, that wind strong enough to blow semis off the road in the northwestern part of the state. And that's what we're going to be dealing with with this entire line. So we're back now just to the west of Indianapolis. Um, here's I-70 to give you some perspective. Not severe here, but just across the state line. Those are severe storms coming out of eastern Illinois. And we do have some new severe thunderstorm warnings for this area for Clinton, Rockville, Greencastle. So this is something that we're going to continue to watch. And, and we really anticipate that these storms will continue to be severe and most likely will have warnings north to south across this line, which is basically what we're dealing with now. So there's the warning for Vigo County, Southern Park, including New Rockville. This is going to go until 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, Greencastle in Putnam County and then Southern Montgomery County and then down toward the Brazil area. So this is a move it east at 70. Wow. OK, so uh, what you see in Illinois moving east at 70 miles per hour. These are going to move quickly your way, so you really don't have much in the way of, of notice. But we're giving you notice that 
we want you to treat these as if they can do damage because they have done damage. These storms have had a history of wind damage, have had a history of tornadoes across Illinois, and they're now entering the western part of our state. New warnings that go until 11 o'clock. Uh, heads up, these storms are moving in right now and moving very quickly off to the north and east. We will go northeast. Intense storm, uh, northern Montgomery County. This is just north of Crawfordsville. Uh, when we see these purples and sometimes black show up on live Doppler 13 radar, really indicating the intensity of this storm, uh, damaging wind threat, a hail threat, very heavy rain and plenty of lightning. Uh, Lafayette, we've got rain, Delphi, Flora into Deer Creek as we move across the northern part of the state. Okay. Pulaski County, so that's north. Okay, getting some information from the newsroom that Homeland Security has issued a travel warning for Pulaski County. That's northwest, right? Yes. Okay, so that's going to be in the northern part of the state. Um, okay, so they're dealing with um, not technically our viewing area, so I haven't really been focused too much on that fa that far north, but it is an indication of the power and the strength of this storm system. Homeland Security issuing a travel warning for the Pulaski County area in the northern part of the state. And you can see up near the South Bend area, they've got tornado warnings as well. And along this line from north to south, we have tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm going to take the radar off just because it makes it a little easier to see uh, where we have all of these warnings. Uh, there's the tornado warning up toward the South Bend area. Locally, we've got several severe thunderstorm warnings. Um, latest one approaching Marion, so these were, are going to move eventually into the eastern half of the state as well. Warnings just south of Lafayette, and there's that confirmed tornado warning in southwestern Indiana. So uh, a dangerous situation setting up. We've been talking about this all week and expected this um, tonight, and, and, and unfortunately, uh, we are getting in on, on the severe storms that developed earlier this afternoon across parts of Iowa, Missouri, northwestern Illinois, and Arkansas doing a lot of damage. And Sean's been monitoring closely that uh, confirmed tornado warning that is south of Terre Haute. And this one is obviously our, our strongest cell, but we want to make sure that if you're under a warning that you treat it as if it could produce a tornado. And the circulation with this one right over the Sullivan area, Sean, and moving quickly toward Jasonville. You don't have much time at all, Jasonville. Um, and this is looks like it's going to stay just northwest of Bloomfield. So we're into the southwestern part of the state, including Greene County. But that circulation right over Sullivan now, tracking northeast toward Jasonville. Clay City, I'm going to give you a heads up. We need to watch this one closely. It's not very far away from you. Worthington, Spencer, Gosport, Ellettsville, and Bloomington. John. Yeah, I like, I like that because um, I think it's lifting northeast. Mm -hmm. Uh, so all those towns that you've mentioned, and we could even go a bit farther out than that. Um, you know, if you're watching us in Martinsville, again, this this is the storm that you're you're seeing on live Doppler 13 radar. This is the one that will have the greatest tornado potential. Um, and now with live Doppler 13 radar, and we don't see this very often, um, but we are seeing um, that this is now producing what we call a tornado debris signature. So uh, right on top of Sullivan, but it's that lone cell until it gets ingested by the line of storms that are moving east at between 60 and 70 miles per hour. But it's by itself and it's in an environment that is that has a lot of spin and the greatest instability, basically the greatest area to produce tornadoes in uh, central Indiana is where you're seeing it right now. So that's why we have to watch this until it can get sucked up uh, by the line. Now the line itself means business. We could still get additional tornado warnings. I just think, you know, as we've been trying to stress with this line, until it can weaken, and that may not happen until it gets east of Indianapolis after 11, um, 11, 11 30, that we, uh, we're going to get some pockets of wind damage, and some of those gusts uh, may be over 70 miles per hour. So it doesn't matter what's doing damage, but we know um, for sure, and we're seeing this thing spin there, um, you know, we'll have to make some calls whether or not it, it, it did any damage in Sullivan, but Jasonville, you have less than five minutes, um, and hopefully you've been following um, what we've been trying to stress. 
um, our concern with this particular storm as it still has a strong velocity couplet. So we look for those, those, those colors that are right there. All right, so that's, that's what the wind velocity looks like. And uh, versus earlier when we had a really tight, um, what we call a donut on the debris uh, signature. Well, we're still seeing a little bit there, just east of Sullivan. Um, but that's why it went from a, you know, a typical tornado warning to a confirmed tornado warning was based on that. So this thing could still be on the ground and doing damage. And I, I'd, ar I'd argue that probably is there uh, between Sullivan and Cass. That, 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 let, me, let me circle it just so you can see what we're, we're addressing. Again, this, in this particular product um, tells us um, the radar is seeing non-meteorological targets. So, you know, it's seeing it, it could be um, windows, it could be shingles, it could be branches of trees, things like that. But that's what, uh, that's why we had the upgrade uh, in this uh, tornado warning to now a confirmed tornado warning. We will see if it gets extended. Um, I would suggest that the, if the radar velocities are going to remain the way they are, then we're going to get an extension of this and get it pretty quickly. Okay, and you mentioned staying north of Lenton, so you can see they shave the southern portion off. So we may get an extension here uh, over parts of Owen and Monroe counties. Um, and that would, again, get you into Spencer and Ellettsville probably within the next, uh, the, within the next half hour. Because so. you pointed out it's moving so fast yeah. to the north yeah. and east. And so those towns that we mentioned uh, ahead of this, uh, yeah. like the Clay City, like the Worthington, Freedom, Spencer, Gosport, Ellettsville, Bloomington, um, although right now with that movement, Sean, it, it may in fact stay just north of Bloomington, but, but there's a track for you. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm going to, let's do this, we'll do 60. So that takes it out, uh, that, this is over an hour. So Martinsville within 40 minutes. Again, mm -hmm. if it stays on this course and if it holds together, it's possible that uh, that won't necessarily be the case. I've been, I've been talking about this online. <coughs> Um, there's eventually this these storms are going to run out of, of instability eventually just don't know when that's going to be um, we certainly know west of I-60 you got a new warning yeah there you go okay yeah, good call yeah so there you go new new and this is what we've been trying to stress here so this is not your this is not your typical um, tornado warning this is you can see the box there confirmed tornado warning that includes portions of Owen County uh, until 1115 includes portions of uh, Green County until 1115 this is why we're on the air this is why we do what we do so you can see that rotation uh, just about on Jasonsville so uh, now we've got Worthington we've got Spencer we've got Freedom um, and it's it's on top of Jasonville as we speak so. Yeah, and, th and that really isn't that far away from Clay City, Freedom, Spencer. So just as we were talking about those areas in advance of this confirmed tornado, uh, National Weather Service extends that uh, confirmed tornado. And the circulation, as Sean mentioned, is right over Jasonville. And that's less than 10 miles away from Clay City. And I'm going to put this out to Spencer. And less than 25 miles away from Spencer. And this is moving easily over 60 miles per hour. So you don't have a lot of time to put that safety plan into action and now's the time to do it. If you live in Clay City, if you live in Worthington, if you live in Freedom and Spencer as this uh, confirmed tornado warning has been extended now uh, and we want to make sure that you are in the safest part of your home and that's going to be away from windows and doors, uh, the lowest, lowest level that you can get. Um, Obviously, Sean's been uh, showing you the debris detector and the velocities, and we still have that really strong, tight rotation right over Jasonville, tracking quickly north and east, Clay City, Worthington, Spencer, Gosport. You will be in the path of this storm. Let's um, get back to, to the traditional view of the radar and reset on the coverage. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings north. We've got the confirmed tornado warning south. This line is going to move from west to east over the next two and a half hours very quickly. Uh, we've gotten some updates from the National Weather Service that some of these individual storms are racing northeast at 70 miles an hour. 
So in advance, you've got a little time if you're in the eastern half of the state to be thinking, okay, where am I going to go when the warning is issued? And we anticipate warnings from north to south uh, across this line, and we want you to treat them uh, perhaps a little more than just your typical severe thunderstorm warning because of that tornado watch. Still that potential, these could quickly rotate. Okay, 2,700 uh, Duke power outages, and we're getting reports 1,000 power outages in Sullivan. And remember, that's where Sean was tracking that debris signature with live Doppler 13 radar, and where we uh, it, were tracking that tornado, that confirmed tornado, and now unfortunately getting reports of some power outages. So the newsroom putting in some work uh, to get us that information. We're going to continue to bring you uh, that as it comes along. I do have a, a new warning. This is going to be a severe thunderstorm warning, and it's going to include areas just to the north of Indianapolis, um, so just north of Fishers because of the strong storm uh, that is now over and north of Crawfordsville. It's headed into Frankfurt, Lebanon, Sheridan, Tipton, Cicero. Your severe thunderstorm warning goes until 1115. So this is going to cover northern Boone County, southern Clinton, western Tipton, and northwestern Hamilton counties until 1115. That is a new severe thunderstorm warning with the potential for damaging winds, can't rule out a tornado, and the, perhaps some, some hail as well. Uh, to the north, we have severe storms rolling through Logansport and Peru right now. These are tracking north and east, still under severe thunderstorm warnings at this point, uh, south through Deer Creek. And then uh, these will eventually track north and east into Wabash and then eventually out of our viewing area. I um, want to give you a heads up. Marion Gas City, Fairmount, uh, Kokomo, Tipton, what you see to your west all of that kind of coming together and eventually will move your way. Up and down this line, we have severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm going to check this area here for um, the potential for some rotation uh, with this one. And, and it looks it's not overly impressive, but we're picking up on just a little bit. That's northeast of Crawfordsville. Uh, which is the reason we want to make sure that you're treating these uh, a little more than just a typical severe thunderstorm warning. So if you can, be in the safest part of your home and, and getting a, a little more higher reflectivity with, with the velocities here, Sean. Just to the south of Colfax, uh, in between Darlington New and Thorntown. Uh, they are going tornado warning yeah, with that. There okay. you go. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Clinton, Howard, parts of Clinton, Howard, Boone, for what you're just talking about, uh, for the rotation there, moving um, northeast of Darlington. So um, we'll wait and see if this becomes a, a radar confirmed tornado, but this is why we're staying on the air. Um, and now this, uh, this warning goes until 1115. That's a large tornado warning polygon, so that means there are a lot of spots um, where the sirens are, your phones are going off and sirens are going off now, okay? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, as, as we were doing kind of the south to north reset, uh, live Doppler 13 radar really did pick up yep. on this little pocket of rotation northeast of Crawfordsville, and boy, it didn't take long to s have that severe thunderstorm warning go quickly to a tornado warning. So if you live in Darlington, uh, Colfax, Thorntown, that rotation is basically right over you now. So this is just west of Interstate 65 as the storm tracks north and east. Frankfurt, Kirkland, Kempton, uh, Sharpsville, Forest, Rusheville, you're all going to be in the path of this storm and a new tornado warning. It's time to put that safety plan into action. Lowest level of your home away from windows and doors. And you can see as the radar updates, uh, we've seen an increase in that potential for, um, for rotation with this storm uh, approaching Colfax and Thorntown right now. I am going to do a quick track on this since we're here to give you an idea. Okay, we're up to 4,000 uh, power outages. Uh, Duke, the majority of those, unfortunately, coming from the Sullivan area with that confirmed tornado warning. We're going to get back to that area in just a second. But while we're here, I am going to do a quick track on the storm that is um, basically in the Colfax-Thorntown area. And we'll just kind of do the 
I'm going to do the leading edge. So where we kind of have um, the brighter colors showing up just to kind of give you an early heads up. Um, even though the center of the circulation may be back west just a bit, just to make sure you've got a, a couple of extra minutes, honestly, to, the, to know that this one is coming your way. So as this tracks off to the northeast, we've been going 60, 70 miles per hour, Sean. North and uh, I, east. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is, it's over Thorntown. Frankfurt, you've got seven minutes. Michigan Town, 13. Forest, 17 minutes. This is our latest tornado warning. You need to be in the safest part of your home uh, away from windows and doors. And we're going to come back out and go back to the area that is under the confirmed tornado warning just um, to get you you know, aware of where this one is going to go next. And it is moving off to the northeast very quickly. And we've been getting some reports out of the Sullivan area of several thousand power outages. And, and as we tracked this confirmed tornado warning, uh, Sean was able to show the debris signature with it that the radar wasn't picking up raindrops or wind, but most likely um, siding could be a rooftop, could be trees, could be power lines, but it, it was picking up on that. And we still have intense rotation with this storm pushing east of Jasonville. Yes. Now that uh, now I will say uh, based on based on the latest debris tracker information on that one, I'm not as confident it's still in progress. Okay. It's still in a healthy environment to produce a tornado. Okay. I will say that what you're seeing behind me now with this new tornado warning, and they've just gone confirmation on this one. Oh, um, wow. So they've upgraded to confirmation. That's what I was about to say. Um, unfortunately, the radar velocities are looking very, very impressive here. This is near Colvax. Uh, it is going to cross over 52, and it's going to cross over I-65. If you know of anyone, that is going to be traveling uh, mm. this direction, 65. Tell them to stay off the road. This is going to be crossing here very, very soon. And this is why they've upgraded to the um, confirmed tornado. Because again, we can look at, uh, get, uh, look at the radar here and that donut hole. That's what we saw down by Sullivan. And now we're oh, really, yeah, wow. that's, that is not a good sign there. That is not a good sign at all. So that we know, so we're going to get close here. So there's Colfax. It may have just stayed just outside um, of the limits there, but close enough either way, crossing Highway 52, um, and eventually this thing's going to cross over I-65. So again, that's a, that's a radar confirmed tornado. It sticks out like a sore thumb. And it gives um, gives the folks it just we gives us confidence that we know this is producing a tornado. It'll just be a matter of what what size it is. You can see, and this is pretty strong radar velocity here too, Angela. That we're circling that red and green there. Uh, that's a very tight couplet, and so that's going to be if you're watching us in Frankfurt, you're watching us in Kirkland. Can't, can't we cannot tell you when this thing is going to to run its course. Um, either way. Even without a tornado, uh, we're still going to get wind damage out of this. Feel pretty confident in that. So, Michigan Town, Kempton, let's let's track this out from where the circulation. Actually, I'm going to do it in front of the circulation because they are moving so fast, so so fast here. Now, I'm going to do a rather wide swath of this, and we're going to do it at uh, about you know 65 miles per hour. And give me just bear with me here. Let's take this out. Let's take this out at least uh, 30 minutes and let's go a little farther. Let's go 40. Again, we, we don't know. I can't tell you if you're in Greentown, if this if the if the circulation will hold together. But if it does, this is what we're talking about. So we're talking about uh, in Michigan town less than 15 minutes. And right now this is not showing any signs uh, of weakening or cycling. Uh, Kempton less than 20 minutes, Sharpsville less than a half an hour. So until this can get to your east, um, please get in your safe. You got time. You got time um, to get in your safe spots, lowest level, away from windows, basement preferable. If not, again, the lowest level, as many walls between yourself and the outside portion of your home. Uh, since we're getting this new scan in, real quickly before I get it back to Angela there, you can see still a mm -hmm. debris signature, tornado debris signature. Let's. Let's take the radar back just a little bit. So it went from tornado warning to once you see that. So it, it, it likely hit Bowers. Um, 
based on, right, see there? Yeah. So you go from there to there. There's the tornado debris signature. And let's hope, you know, it might have missed Colfax. Uh, but still, uh, you know, we know that there's a path of tornado damage right there yeah. embedded yeah. within this. And, and, and maybe it stays south of Frankfurt, but boy, Frankfurt, you really need to, yeah. to be in the safest. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So radar confirmed tornado. Uh, and by the way, we mentioned all of this because that just goes to show you that, you know, it, it, it's nighttime. We were hoping these things, we knew they will eventually weaken. Uh, but within this whole line, within this whole line, this is what you can get sometimes. You can get these, these spin ups. Whether or not it's going to happen uh, farther west, southwest, we can still get spin ups. Um, and even if we don't, we can still get wind damage. So we, there's going to be additional, additional uh, severe thunderstorm and, and or tornado warnings between now and the time um, we get to about 1, 1 a. This severe weather show is over uh, by 1.30. But we've, we're going to have a couple hours here where it's going to be a bit dicey. Yeah, and, yeah. and that one escalated quickly. You know, we were kind of giving a, a reset and saw, um, you know, the, the signature coming in from live Doppler 13 radar and went to velocities and really started to notice in a matter of a couple of minutes uh, the increase of, uh, of what we were seeing in terms of the velocities. And then it went quickly from a severe thunderstorm warning to a tornado warning to now confirm. So Frankfurt, Kirkland, Forest, Kempton, Sharpsville, you are now in this confirmed tornado warning area. Uh, the center of the circulation is now pushed east of Colfax. And we'll put the velocities back on and we'll do a little more analysis uh, kind of street level to show you where this is exactly. Um, it, crossing uh, 52 and the circular, it's, they're just moving so fast. Yeah. It's uh, now well east of, um, of Colfax and now east of Interstate 65. So we saw that quickly move north and east and it's going to be this area here um, along and just east of Interstate 65, just southwest of Frankfurt. We'll kind of go in a little even, a little closer. Um, so if you're familiar with this area east of Colfax, in between Colfax and Frankfurt, it's going to be the Manson area, Antioch, um, and then just to the south of Frankfurt. But heads up, this storm is moving quickly off to the east. It is now already racing east of Interstate 65. Um, and Ashley, in, in the booth, maybe we could check some cameras in the area. I don't know if there happened to have been any semis, unfortunately, traveling in this area along Interstate 65. That's going to be, um, I'll, I'll come out just a little bit so you can see. So it's going to be south of Lafayette, Ashley, um, in between Lafayette and basically uh, Thorntown as this uh, cell that's uh, really racing toward the Frankfurt area right now that, uh, that we'll continue to monitor. And we are getting several, several reports. Okay, so we do have, and that's going to be from earlier today. Yeah. So um, this is going to be the Remington area uh, video of some of the um, semis being blown over along Interstate 65. It's going to take us a little while to see if we get any additional video south of Lafayette with that storm that just moved through the Colfax area. Um, but boy, what a mess. And this is the type of activity that we're expecting for the next couple of hours. So if you don't have to be out, um, it's probably a good idea to let these storms move mm -hmm. through just because this is what you can expect on the roads if you get into one of these storms with damaging winds and or a tornado. And we have been talking all night long about our uh, through this coverage that you really need to treat all severe thunderstorm warnings as if they could produce a tornado. And we're seeing evidence of that with the storm that uh, moved through Colfax. It quickly tightened up that circulation um, and that is now moving very quickly off to the east into the Frankfurt area. So here we are. If this one is still rotating, that rotation right over Frankfurt at this point headed toward Michigan town and forest. So please be in the safest part of your home. We may um, be lucking out with this. Uh, we may be lucking out. I don't okay, want to think it's well, they need, you, you're, if you're in Frankfurt, you still need yes. to be in your safe location. Okay. Uh, I just it's not the the circulation is not as strong. Okay. Again, 
you need you still need to be in your in your safe location because it could it could still cycle. Um, um, we want you there. I just I think compared to where it was near Kofax, it's just a it's a little a little bit different now, and I hope that I hope that trend holds. Uh, because that would be optimal. All right. So what, let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about on live Doppler 13 radar. Again, tornado warning still continues. Um, <clears throat> it's no longer a confirmed tornado warning, but the tornado warning still continues. Now this is watch the clock here. So we're going back in time. There's the strongest circulation right there. That's when we got the confirmed tornado, and then as we play through. Okay, so it, it's weakened. It's it's weakened a little bit, and why that is important, bear with me. And uh, let me just clear the radar data, and then let me zoom in. So look how populated mm -hmm. that that is versus what was to its southwest. It still was doing damage, unfortunately. Um, but I hope that this trend will continue. I can't can't guarantee it, but it it, it looks a little bit better than it did. But still, the tornado warning continues. Um, and so if you're watching us in Frankfurt, if you're watching us in Michigan town, you still need to be in your safe locations until this until this this line can get to your east here. OK, and really, you know, Sean, that's kind of what we were we were talking about. Um, the line itself, we were worried with the potential for damaging winds and these embedded tornadoes that could quickly develop uh -huh. with little to no warning. And it looks like maybe that was the case with that cell that developed right over Colfax. So that's going to be south of Lafayette. So we're the newsroom going to make some calls in this area south of Lafayette along Interstate 65 uh, near the Colfax area and in between Colfax and Frankfurt, where we think this storm has has weakened somewhat. Uh, numerous warnings from north to south across the state. We are approaching 11 o'clock. Our coverage will continue until these storms clear the state and the thing is now that's going to be um, about one o'clock. Several thousand power outages, uh, 2,000 reported south of Terre Haute in the Sullivan area with this storm here. And that is going to be, uh, let's, we'll get there, uh, south of Terre Haute. And that's still that confirmed tornado warning, although it looks like they've gone tornado warning for you, Spencer. So we'll check the circulation with this one. But Spencer, Gosport still need to be in the safest part of your home um, away from windows and doors. But just southwest of you, a couple thousand power outages reported uh, when this storm crossed into southwestern Indiana. Uh, we're getting uh, 1,200 reports out of uh, south, the south central REMC uh, coming out of Owen and Morgan counties. Um, so just be aware power outages, trees, power lines down, all going to be threats with this uh, line of storms containing damaging wind threat and the potential for these quick spin up tornadoes. While we're here, we'll check a, a couple of things. So we're going to check the, the shear detector, which is going to give us an idea of, uh, and we definitely have that spike here right over Spencer. So we've been keeping you weather aware in Spencer and Gosport um, when this storm crossed into Indiana that it looked like it was on a line to impact you. And we are seeing that spike of rotation, whether it's a tornado doing damage or straight line winds. We want to make sure that you're in the safest part of your home uh, away from windows and doors. And we still have um, a fair amount of uh, velocities indicating that rotation right over Spencer right now. And this is quickly moving off to the northeast Gosport. And while we're here, Martinsville, I'm going to give you a heads up. At this point, it's a severe thunderstorm warning for you. That has just been issued for the Martinsville area and Bloomington. That severe thunderstorm warning is going to go until 1130. But as we've talked about, we want to make sure you treat this uh, a little more seriously than just a severe thunderstorm warning where we might have wind gusts 50, 60 miles per hour. We're talking gusts that may be 60, 70 miles per hour and quick spin ups of tornadoes that are possible. Uh, Gosport uh, up to Martinsville, Ellettsville, and then the Bloomington area. Although Bloomington, it looks like that that more significant rotation is staying just north of you. 
However, we want you to be in the safest part of your home away from windows and doors. And this circulation Gosport that's in Spencer is less than five miles away from you and Martinsville less than 20. And with these storms moving 60, 70 miles per hour, they're going to be on your doorstep really within minutes. So please uh, put that safety plan into action and make sure you're at the in the lowest level away from windows and doors. We'll go back to a traditional radar and then kind of go north along this line to give you an idea of, of where the storms are and where they're going next. Um, monitoring this complex from uh, west of Greencastle to Crawfordsville, there's that tornado warning still for the Frankfurt area just southwest of Kokomo. Okay, um, I'm getting word from the newsroom and Ashley, um, our producer in the booth tonight, IU Kokomo warning students to shelter in place or to get into shelter yeah, sure. because of of the storm. So uh, we just mentioned you Kokomo and so IU Kokomo obviously uh, making sure their students are aware and we want to welcome you to 13 news at 11. Our severe weather coverage continues. It started um, I think a couple of hours ago at this point uh, with a couple of tornado warnings north and west and as we reset we have a big line of storms and this is what we've been watching all day long and these storms are now here. Lots of colors, not only on the radar, but warnings as well. And we'll get you kind of reset from north to south with the new information coming in just within the last five minutes of IU Kokomo letting students know they need to be in the safest part of their um, of their home, whether that be in a dormitory or off campus housing or, or what have you, their apartments and you need to make friends with somebody on the lowest level. So IU Kokomo warning students uh, that they want you to be in shelter away from windows and doors as this storm moves your way. It's coming out of Frankfurt. It quickly intensified over Colfax. We did get a debris signature on live Doppler 13 radar indicating that the radar was picking up something other than raindrops or wind. Um, the rotation a little more broad and not quite as strong, not quite seeing the peak that we did over Colfax, but the tornado warnings do continue and they've added a new one here to include that area from Frankfurt over toward Kokomo and that uh, that is a new tornado warning at this point and that one is going to go until it's going to include Western Howard County and Northern Clinton until 1115. So this is our new tornado warning, Sean. So two things here. I've got a track on that uh, moving east at 65 miles per hour. We mentioned IU Kokomo less than 15 minutes, less than uh, about 15 minutes to get to that Chrysler transmission plant and then the Galveston at 18 minutes. We're going to go from that storm. So if you're in these, if you see your town on the map here, Rucheville, Michigan Town, Kokomo, Greentown, Sharpsville, get in your safe locations. Unfortunately, and we have talked about this uh, for a bit, we've got an extension of the tornado warning. Now this is with a cell that's had a history of doing damage back into southern Illinois. I want to stress that the rotation with this storm will stay north of Bloomington um, and likely will stay north of Lake M Lemon. And I would say it's probably going to stay north of Ellettsville. Now, with that said, Angela's mentioned Gosport with this when it was over Spencer. We've mentioned Paragon. We've mentioned Martinsville tonight. Stay with us. Remember, we talked about that. Now you're in this tornado warning polygon uh, as well as uh, Morgantown. That's going to go until 1130. Technically, keep in mind that these storms are moving very quick, 65 to near 70 miles per hour. So uh, the circulation um, has gone from rather impressive when it was over Spencer to not as impressive now. But what could happen is that this storm could be doing something that we call cycling, and then it could be reforming a tighter circulation just to the east. And that would up the ante for uh, Paragon and Martinsville. And so let's do a, a track on this. Let me, um, let me just double check to make sure we don't have, yeah, well, well I tell you, they've got a little donut hole there near, uh, just to the southwest of Gosport. So that is possibly a tornado debris signature there. Let's play, yep, yep, that's what it is. Uh, so that's unfortunate. So that means it's probably picked up something near or just north of Spencer. And that's why we're starting to see that blue. I'll circle it so you can get a better idea of where it is. 
So that is just to the south of Gosport, okay? Um, that's our debris detector, so that's picking up. It could be trees, it could be, you know, pieces of a home, but that would be it. So when I go back to the radar velocities here, not overly impressive, but it, it where there is a circulation uh, matches up to that tornado debris signature. So I'm going to take this track out, and if you have just joining us here uh, on, on our news here at uh, 11 o'clock, these things have been moving so fast, uh, almost going a little more northeast, I'd argue, Angela. Uh, yeah. In the last, uh, you know, so that puts it in Martinsville with less than 15 minutes, Paragon in less than seven, and uh, at Gosport here in. in you know, between now and, and in the next five minutes. Yeah, and this is another one, Sean, that escalated quickly from yep. a simple severe thunderstorm yep. warning to now upgraded to a tornado warning, which is the reason we've been mentioning since our coverage started. You really needed to treat all of these warnings as if they could produce a tornado. And they just upgraded it to a confirmed tornado uh, warning now. So um, mm -hmm. that was kind of what we were we were talking about. So they've upgraded it to a confirmed based on that that debris detector that we were showing you. Okay, so yeah. we've got obviously uh, several areas of concern at this point. Um, the new confirmed tornado warning is going to be for that area north of Bloomington. I'm going to give you some closer views, but we want to make sure you have the full picture that we've got severe thunderstorm warnings from just northwest of Marion. Uh, tornado and confirmed tornado warnings uh, near the Kokomo area and that new confirmed tornado warning uh, that is um, just to the north of Bloomington and severe thunderstorm warnings that come as close to uh, Marion County is basically the county line. So within this line of storms, uh, we've got several warnings and unless you're in Lafayette and Terre Haute, you've got severe threat for the next couple of hours from Indianapolis East and we want to make sure you stay with us. Our coverage is going to continue. I'm sorry, Ashley. 6,000 Duke right. outages. Okay, um, and we're going to go back to some video that we that we've got. We're going to do that in a few minutes after this that this reset. But we just want to make sure that you're clear on, on what we're dealing with and the warnings that are in place right now. So let's start south. This is the new confirmed tornado warning that is going to be for. Uh, the Ellettsville area, just north of Ellettsville, thinking that circulation and, and live Doppler 13 radar picking up on that, that it is north of Ellettsville, right over Gosport, headed into Paragon and uh, Martinsville. Sean pointed out with that debris detector that we had this little spike near the Spencer area, and most likely that's the reason the National Weather Service has gone confirmed tornado warning on this, uh, right over Gosport, Paragon and Martinsville, Adams, uh, Morgantown, you are all now kind of highlighted in this confirmed tornado warning. And I'm going to give you a heads up, Bargersville, um, Needham, Franklin, uh, maybe up toward the Greenwood area eventually, if this storm stays tornadic, we're going to continue to see this track quickly north and east. But safest part of your home, away from windows and doors, confirmed tornado warning for you. Uh, this goes until um, 1130, and that's going to include a, a good part of Morgan County, and then back toward the Gosport area in Monroe County, northern Monroe, and then just to Owen County, including Spencer. But we think that rotation now is just east of you, Spencer. So let's clear this warning area. And we'll come up to the north. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. I'm going to put the radar back on. It's just kind of easier to see where the warnings are without the radar. Uh, Brownsburg, Avon, Plainfield, Mooresville, new severe thunderstorm warning for you until 1145. Again, this comes to the county line, so Marion County will eventually be next. Up into Boone County, Zionsville, and Lebanon, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. And then north of there, Here's where we're back into tornado warnings and confirmed tornado warnings for Clinton County for this area that is now east of Frankfurt approaching Kokomo. We did get word that IU Kokomo is now having students get in their safe places at this point. And then just to the north of there, we have severe thunderstorm warnings for Miami County just to the northwest. So that kind of gets us caught up on the warnings. Let's put the radar back on and you can clearly see what we're dealing with in terms of this line of storms. And it's something we've been tracking since this afternoon. If you were watching our coverage leading up to this event, we expected that initiation point to be across parts of Iowa. That's in fact where storms developed this afternoon, uh, brought 
confirmed tornadoes into northwestern Illinois, and we've had additional storms develop along this line that now is moving from west to east across the state of Indiana and something that, that we continue to monitor closely. We'll do some individual um, analysis with this as we monitor where we have the potential for some rotation. And Sean's also doing uh, latest analysis looking at those debris signatures as well. But we are to the north of Indianapolis. So this is near the Kokomo area. And this is one area that had a confirmed tornado warning still picking up on uh, that potential for a rotating storm, uh, not nearly as intense as it was as it moved uh, through the Colfax area. And then we had perhaps some additional rotation as it moved uh, east of Frankfurt. Uh, it is approaching Sharpsville right now into Kokomo. You now have minutes to get into the safe place if you aren't already there. And then heads up, Sims, Marion, Elwood, you're going to be next. Strongest part of this storm in the circulation tipped in, staying at this point just to your north. Let's go south with little to no warning. And we have seen this now with a couple of cells. Uh, we go from a severe thunderstorm warning quickly to a tornado, quickly to a confirmed tornado warning. And, and that's what we're watching now uh, in the Paragon area. So this is just to the southwest of Martinsville. In Martinsville, we've been letting you know that you needed to be in the safest part of your home as the circulation of this storm is developing just to your west. So we want to make sure that you are aware that this storm is moving your way, really just now minutes away. In fact, um, less than two miles. So please be in the safest part of your home away from windows and doors as this uh, storm is moving your way. And it's really one of several that we continue to monitor. With the shear rate, yep, we definitely have that little spike there that's approaching Martinsville, whether that is rotating and doing damage or straight line winds doing damage 60 70 miles per hour it still has that potential so martinsville and adams you are next this storm is moving your way uh, very quickly off to the north and east these storms have been racing uh, 60 70 miles per hour Okay, we're going to take you up uh, to uh, Interstate 65. This is going to be north of Lafayette in the Remington area. So if you were traveling, say, from Lafayette up towards Chicago, this is the area that we had uh, semis rolled over. And we've got backups and slowdowns north and southbound lanes. Uh, and we did get a report um, that it was uh, closed in a few areas. So I'm going to go back to that report. Uh, looked like it was, um, INDOT was reporting all lanes of 65 southbound blocked just south of Remington because of overturned semis. Uh, and we did get some video from Alan Carter, who actually is a former colleague and was in the area. And you can see just the sheer amount of semis overturned. This is why we caution you, if you don't have to be out the next couple of hours, uh, don't because these storms will quickly move uh, from west to east across the state with winds that may exceed 70 miles per hour, doing damage, may produce tornadoes, and, and this is the impact. And we'll go, before we get to Sean, we'll go back out live real quick to that in-dot camera one more time just to show you the backup that we're dealing with now. Uh, this, again, is video from earlier this evening. And we've had several reports across the state. Um, there's that live view of the in-dot camera. This is uh, Interstate 65 uh, north of the Remington area. So just be aware we still have storms moving through. And live Doppler 13 radar will set the stage on, on what we're dealing with. A couple of confirmed tornado warnings, additional severe thunderstorm warnings, Sean, as everything uh, continues to head east. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, you know, we get uh, new tornado warning that now includes Kokomo, now includes Greentown. Not a, not a complete surprise there. Circulation right now as we analyze radar, it's over Rucheville. Uh, lifting east, northeast. Uh, so that'll put it in Kokomo here very soon. Let's go ahead, uh, just double check. Not seeing anything on the debris tracker that's confirming this. And the warning itself is radar indicated rotation. So let's, uh, let's take this out from the circulation center and then we'll, we'll spread it east here. And again, was, we've stressed all night long the, uh, the speed of these storms. So that puts it, to, you know, you got five minutes or less in Kokomo, the uh, Chrysler plant in less than five minutes, Greentown less than 15. 
um, and uh, Swayze in less than 20 minutes. So that is radar indicated rotation. Now that's not to say that between now and the next five minutes this could not um, you know, drop to the ground and then move into uh, a, a much higher populated area. And we're seeing a little bit of that, my friends. I'm telling you there, uh, just west of the campus of IU Kokomo and just west, west southwest of the city. And, and when I say that, it's this right here, that little uptick in the, in the velocity uh, that concerns me a bit. Either way, lowest level, away from windows, middle portion of whatever structure that you are in. Um, basement preferable, but if you don't have that lowest level, put as many walls between yourself and the outside portion of your home. Hopefully you have your safety kit that we've stressed about and that would include uh, you know, pillows, you know, protection for your head as uh, if this thing does uh, decide to drop down, um, it's gonna be moving into a, a highly populated area uh, that's within our tornado alley here locally. Mm. We know how many times that this um, particular part of our viewing area has been impacted by tornadoes uh, over the years here. So there's the tornado warning polygon. Uh, Rucheville, I would argue you're, you're in strong mm. wind now, the tornado circulation just to your east and gonna be moving into downtown Kokomo uh, within the next three minutes now. And I also wanna walk, get back down to what we've been following here. And so we have mentioned Martinsville multiple times tonight. You are still under a confirmed tornado warning for the time being. Uh, and that circulation is, is moving along, um, moving right into the town, okay? Let's circle it up, in fact, just south side of town there. Um, let me just look at our debris tracker. Now we had one earlier this evening. This one's kind of a little more harder to detect in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But the circulation you see there maybe, maybe stays just south of Martinsville. Either way, be in your, in your safe location until this can get to the east and you still may, still may end up with strong wind out of this. And uh, I suspect it's right there. Um, and you can see where Martinsville, so that was, that's where the circulation is gonna be moving. And we're also getting these new warnings that are coming in. Uh, you see this tornado warning. So, and the reason, so this is a, this is, this is one of the longer tornado po uh, warning polygons we've had, Angela. This goes all the way out to Shelbyville wow. now. And the reason for this is that south and southwest, this is a long track supercell storm. And as you can see, we've, and we've talked about how many times we were hoping this, we were hoping this thing would get um, sucked up by the line. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been the case. And when these cells can stay by themselves like this, it ups the odds that they can produce tornadoes, which this particular storm has uh, unfortunately produced damage in Southern Illinois. It's produced damage in Sullivan. We'll see if we can get any confirmation on just how severe the damage in Sullivan is, but there's, we know that there's been damage there. Um, this is, so it's now over Martinsville. Extended the warning, which includes Bark. So these are all communities now that um, their phones are going off. This is New Whiteland, uh, Bargersville, Franklin, Trafalgar, Nineveh, Shelbyville, uh, all under a tornado warning technically until midnight, but because of the speed of these storms, uh, it, that threat fr from that particular storm is going to go over. I'm just going to do a track here, Angie, and then we'll get it back to you. Um, there's the circulation. I'm going to do it in front of it because they're just how quick they're moving. Let's do it at uh, 65, near 70 miles an hour. And then let's mm. take this out for about another, we're going to take it out about 40 minutes. So uh, less than a half hour Shelbyville. Wow. Uh, less than 10 minutes in Trafalgar and Franklin less than 15 minutes. The circulation um, with this storm will be over your area if it holds together. And if it doesn't, you still have the possibility of getting severe wind gusts out of it. Uh, and we are getting reports of uh, additional power outages. Sean, we're up to 10,000 or so Duke Energy uh, without power. 
new reports coming in from in between that Bloomington, Ellisville, Spencer area nearing 2000 without power. And you mentioned uh, the damage that most likely occurred in the Sullivan area, several thousand without power in that area south of uh, Terre Haute. Um, and I'm glad you did a track, Sean, on that northern cell uh, in Kokomo that's under the new tornado warning and pointed out places like the Chrysler plant that sometimes can operate a second, third shift so they could have employees on the line doing work with severe co weather coming their way. So hopefully uh, they're watching and taking appropriate precautions uh, if they do have employees working at this point. Uh, we do know IU Kokomo sent out an alert uh, well ahead of the, the line of storms approaching Kokomo, and that's where they are now. So we'll go north to south across uh, along this line. It's rain, not severe. Monticello, Logansport, Flora, Frankfurt, Lafayette, that severe threat has ended. Here's the new tornado warning right over Kokomo. I dare say we've got a stronger storm developing right over Tipton in a severe thunderstorm warning at this point, and these cells are racing off to the northeast uh, near 60, 70 miles per hour. So there's a close-up view of Kokomo. Um, Bunker Hill, Galveston, Kokomo, Greentown, uh, very intense storm over you at this point. We'll check the, the velocities real quick before we get back to radar and then just head south along this line. Um, this area here is an area of concern now. Uh, this is just south of Kokomo, uh, just north of Sharpsville. We've just seen a little spike with the velocities there. Um, whether it's rotating or just we're picking up some straight line wind damage potential here, uh, just be aware center. It's approaching you just to the southwest of Greentown. So we're over Howard and uh, Tipton counties right now. And this storm uh, under a tornado warning at this point, and that tornado warning uh, goes for the next half hour or so. Uh, and it does include uh, Kokomo until 1145. So another um, 15, 20 minutes or so on that tornado warning. So if you live in this area, we've seen a little spike in the velocities approaching the center area. Again, may not be rotating, but that potential for some severe damaging winds at this point. Let's put the radar back on and head south. We'll watch this area, Tipton, very heavy rain back through Sheridan, potential for damaging winds. And as we've seen with several cells already this evening, they can quickly uh, produce a spin up or quickly produce a low end tornado uh, with little to no warning. So we want to make sure you continue to treat these severe thunderstorm warnings as the potential of uh, tornado warnings. Speaking of severe thunderstorm warnings, they've now been extended east to include Madison County until 1145. So just north of Anderson, Elwood, all because of what you see right over Tipton and Sheridan, that threat for damaging winds, hail, and perhaps a, a quick spin up of a tornado. So that severe thunderstorm warning goes until 1145. Uh, let's track south along this line. There we've got um, Lebanon, Brownsburg, Avon, Plainfield. So heavy rain, gusty winds, maybe a little hail starting to move in here um, and will eventually make its way toward downtown Indianapolis. 15, 20 minutes or so because they are moving so fast off to the north and east. Uh, we're picking up a little bit of uh, a detection here of rotation with that storm that Sean was monitoring right over Martinsville. So with live Doppler 13 radar kind of highlighting that area right over uh, Martinsville. Let's check the velocities while we're here. Um, it's not showing a lot, but again, when we get this signature, it indicates at least that potential. And then we're going to monitor this storm as it moves northeast toward Adams, Bargerville, Bargersville, Trafalgar, Franklin, Needham, all the way east toward Shelbyville, now under tornado warning at this hour because of this fast moving storm. And let's come out just a little bit so you can get a better idea of the storm that we're watching. So it's right over Martinsville and this entire area now from Martinsville across southern Johnson County, including New Whiteland, Franklin, Nineveh, into Shelby County, now under a tornado warning because of this fast moving storm that does have a history, at least from what we've seen with live Doppler 13 radar, uh, producing a little bit of damage with that debris signature. The tornado warning goes until midnight as we'll continue to watch very closely what has developed uh, in the Martinsville area. And again, this at times has been a confirmed tornado warning. So that's kind of a reset of, of the storms that we're dealing with. And uh, this is a 
really a setup that we've been talking about all week. We had uh, kind of declared this day a weather aware day and we saw these storms develop across parts of Iowa. They brought tornadoes to Arkansas and now this line is moving across the state of Indiana, bringing with it the potential of damaging winds and isolated tornadoes at this point. And, and I have a feeling, Sean, the National Weather Service is going to have several areas to survey during the day tomorrow or in the coming days as we um, most likely have several pockets of damage uh, associated with this line. Yeah, um, you know, and some of it they'll definitely know because of the radar signatures that we've been showing tonight that yes, it was a it was a tornado. It'll just be a matter of how much damage was done, what type of damage they'll start to rate it. Some of it they'll have to to go into and uh, where we didn't have the confirmed radar uh, tornado debris signature. Uh, they'll have to go in and kind of see these pockets of damage. I will tell you, speaking of damage, emergency manager uh, reported some trees down, not a shock um, around. Let me see that that was in the Kokomo. Um, uh, 400 West, 300 South in Howard County. I apologize, not necessarily the Kokomo, but um, so that's not a surprise. I will say that the tornado threat uh, for Kokomo is over, so it doesn't it doesn't take long. And um, I'd argue the severe threat is starting to diminish there as well because uh, we've been talking all evening long just about the fast movement uh, between 60 and 70 miles per hour. I mean, that's, you know, they're going to be in Ohio here um, at this rate by 1 a.m. So, um, and it's basically west of this line. Once you get behind it, the severe threat is over. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, for Indy, not the case for Johnson County. Still concerned about this supercell. It's been a long track supercell. It's produced multiple tornadoes and it still is showing a hook on radar. And we've got a lot of um, heavily populated cities in front of it. So that concerns me. Um, yeah, pop it up. So this is I six. This is in dot camera. This is I 69. Uh, so that's Martinsville. Um, Martinsville now is within the the line of storms. So we've talked about that there would be a line. That's what it's in now. Um, no more than half hour ago uh, was in the supercell that that caused the uh, tornado warning that still has the tornado warning. And so that's the flashes of lightning. Go back to live Doppler 13 radar and you can see why. Um, so that's the line of storms that's over Martinsville now. Now I'm going to take the lightning off just so we can do a little more analysis. I want to get it, I want to get in with this storm here. And I'm telling you friends, Bargersville, Trafalgar, this, the, the rotation within this supercell may stay just to your north, close enough that stay in your safe spot. But if you are in Franklin and if you are in Bargersville, uh, you need to be in your safe. You should have already been there, but you need to be in your safe location. Uh, that <clears throat> that rotation is uh, it concerns me because again, it's in an area that's favorable to, for this supercell to continue to produce tornadoes. Um, there's still a lot of wind shear, and um, so that I'm showing you that circulation right there. Um, and so my wife just sent me a text. And I thought I heard the sirens, Angela, okay. and I did. So my wife just sent me a text, and this is good because we'll all go through this. She said, um, are the sirens <clears throat> going off for us? We live downtown <laughs> Indianapolis. Do I need to wake up the kids? Oh, and yeah. so um, the answer to that is that <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to have her wake the kids up per se, uh, but it is for what's, what happened is there's a new severe thunderstorm warning that's been issued that includes Marion County and because we're in a tornado watch, that's why they that's why the sirens are going off. Um, but I will tell her that uh, if I see something, you know, I have to call her back. But uh, you know that this is just a, a great tool um, to kind of learn with this here. But so Bargersville, Franklin, safe locations with this storm. Let's double check and make sure that we're not getting any debris signature. And I'm not seeing that right now. I just am concerned about the rotation that is right there uh, that's near Bargersville and that's going to go right right through at minimum the north side uh, of Franklin and possibly we're going to be talking about New Whiteland and that when, when I say that because of the speed of these storms 
that will happen in less than likely less than five minutes. So this, ah. is, this is going to be really fast. I, we're getting reports of I consider a trusted source on Twitter, uh, the Kokomo scanner. Uh, perhaps some damage near the Kokomo area. So yeah. I've sent that on to the newsroom so that we can um, either confirm that or, you know, perhaps it's, it's an area that we, that we visit tomorrow if in fact it, it does appear that we have some damage. So uh, just be aware, uh, this is a, a long line, a large area of severe storms with embedded wind damage potential, embedded tornado potential, and we have seen it happen over the last couple of hours. Okay, so it looks like we've got some new uh, viewer video in, and we obviously don't encourage you to go out and get this video, uh, but this is um, the Interstate 65 area uh, near Frankfort, correct, Ashley? Okay, so this is going to be in Clinton County um, of some semis off the side of the road. Boy, it's so hard to see, and it really is just so dangerous when it's dark out. We may have a confirmed tornado now. Um, probably, probably is. This is uh, Greentown. Okay. Uh, it went through Greentown. So that's what the Kokomo scanner, I think, wa was, was picking up on. Okay. Um, I had somebody, you know, tweet me uh, that they were reporting that, so I checked uh, the Kokomo scanner's Twitter feed, and in fact, they were reporting that. So, so let's go there, Sean. I'll let you do um, yeah. the, the debris stuff and, yep. and find that if, we, if we're picking up on any of that. Yeah, so, um, so again, you know, we'll, this, what we're looking at, that donut there, that again, that's, the radar picking up mm -hmm. objects that are likely being lofted either by sh strong wind, but it's more than likely by tornado here. Uh, so this was back at 1125, and so that puts it close to Greentown, um, and then now, now near Sycamore. So uh, not a complete surprise. Probably had a, you know, a tornado that's been embedded within within that line there and um, east of Kokomo now. If you're watching in Marion, I would, be in your, I would be in your safe spot there. And you can see the tornado warning polygon that's been extended to the northeast all the way up into Huntington um, with uh, that radar confirmed tornado. Okay, so we'll kind of do um, a reset. Sean will continue to analyze live Doppler 13 radar, looking for these, these pockets of debris, looking for the areas of rotation. Uh, we have this long line of severe storms moving now across the eastern half of the state. I'd say we have another hour and a half before we're completely in the clear, but I also want to caution you. We're not going to be done with this storm system yet. Once the storms end, yes, but the threat of damaging winds will continue not associated with thunderstorms tomorrow. We're going to be dealing with 50 mile per hour winds on a saturated ground. That could mean more trees and power lines coming down. So now's the time. If you still have power, charge those cell phones. Make sure they're charged and ready to go just in case you get a power outage. With the storms moving through now or with that potential for strong winds tomorrow, we're going to turn much colder during the day tomorrow with those gusty winds uh, that may in fact exceed 50 miles per hour, not associated with, uh, with thunderstorms. So let's go north because we do have new tornado warnings issued uh, for the area northeast of Kokomo. And again, unconfirmed, but some reports that there's uh, some damage in and around the Kokomo area. And it, you were one uh, city that we've uh, had our eyes on over the last half hour or so. That storm is now making its way just northeast of Marion, approaching Gas City, Fairmount, Elwood. Uh, but the tornado warned cell is now just to the northeast of Kokomo at this point. So while we're here, we'll check the velocities and uh, still picking up on that potential for some rotation coming out of Howard County just west of Marion. So we're now into the western sections of Grant County as this uh, tornado warned cell tracks north and east. And that tornado warning is going to be for that for the Marion area. So uh, again, east of Kokomo and the warning is going to go until 1145 for you, Mary, and the rotation looks to stay just west of Gas City. But Gas City, Fairmount, Hartford City, uh, the severe potential is there as we continue. Okay.
across from Duke Energy. Okay, we are up to 22,000 people, Duke Energy customers, without power. So I, I just mentioned it. If you're still, if you still have power, get that cell phone charged so that you have a way to get alerts, especially with us over the next hour and a half. Uh, we do anticipate this severe threat ending by about 1 a.m., uh, but we may get additional power outages tomorrow. Uh, so just make sure everything is, is charged and, and ready to go. Let's track uh, south along this line. And we have seen this several times where we uh, go under a severe thunderstorm warning, then all of a sudden the storm starts to rotate. So heads up, we want you to treat these warnings as if they could produce a tornado approaching Gas City, Fairmount, Elwood, heads up Frankton, Alexandria, Summitville, what you see west of you, this intense line is moving your way. So just uh, be heads up that this one is moving uh, off to the northeast very quickly between 60 and 70 miles per hour. Let's head south and we'll pick up Marion County. We've got uh, rain heavy at times in Zionsville. Did Sean did mention the fact that the sirens went off in Marion County. That's because we have a tornado watch and a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. And now we've got some rumbles of thunder over downtown Indianapolis, but we're highlighting here Marion County heavy rain starting to fall uh, gusty winds and small hail possible and let's go south to that storm that we were monitoring in the Bargersville area with yeah, uh, rotation. Me. This one worries you. Okay, yeah. um, let me check velocities and I'll let you uh, do some additional analysis and it's still kind of peaking now. Uh, just to the south of New Whiteland. This is approaching 31, so we're in uh, Johnson County, just south of Greenwood, uh, right over and south of New Whiteland. This is crossing Highway 31, so this is um, just to the west of Interstate uh, 65, and we've seen some peaks there in the, the velocities here. Um, so New Whiteland and Whiteland, um, there's 31. Here is Interstate 65, and it's tracking off to the north and east. And before we get to Sean, let's come out just a little bit. Okay, we're again mentioned uh, Duke Energy power outages up to 22,000, 2,000 now reported in the Kokomo area. Uh, but this rotation, uh, Red's Corner, Looks like it stays north of you, Needham, but please be in the safest part of your home. Uh, this is going to track northeast into um, the Fairland area. Uh, so just be aware, coming out of Johnson County and is eventually going to make its way towards Shelby County, Sean. And, and the velocities at this point in this little area approaching Highway 31 look pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, so we're, we're going to use a different product, too. This is a way to take what you're showing, that uh, you know, the wind velocity data, and just kind of cleans it up to where you can narrow down. Uh, still going off of what you were saying, and this cell, is, this is the long track supercell that unfortunately did not get ingested into the squall line. So it upped the odds of it producing tornadoes. Uh, very concerned. It's over Whiteland now. And when we, when we get our new scan, it's going to be even farther east than this. Okay. Very, very quickly. We know that just because of how fast they're, they're moving. This looks like it will stay just to the north of the heart uh, of downtown Franklin. Um, but still, strong circulation there that is going to be heading into now. So now we're going to put it into Bogstown. Um, if Fairland, if it holds together, um, may stay just, it's going to stay, I will say that, you know, obviously this is going to be south of Greenwood, the, the circulation with this. But right there, crossing, um, what's that, uh, Highway 30, you know, Highway 31 there. So again, you see how fast that was. Yeah. Boom. So um, it's just, so it's, it's crossing 65, like right now, if not sooner than that. These things are moving, moving very fast. And it is that, that long track supercell storm that uh, unfortunately has done uh, significant damage across uh, Illinois and then got into Sullivan County as well. I'm gonna actually show you how this progressed. So this, we're going, we're going back to when our coverage started and we were, we were on the air, we were warning you about this cell, that it would have the highest tornado potential. And look at this. And just, it stayed so far in advance of the, of the squall line. Now, the squall line basically is catching up to it now. Um, that, will, that will lessen its, its chance of producing a tornado, but still uh, we have the wind threat that's, get, that's going on here. Now, um, so if you're in Lebanon, if you're in Danville, if you're in Brownsburg, 
uh, the, the, the severe weather threat is over now. It's on top of us in downtown Indianapolis. Still have probably another hour to hour and a half the farther east you go, and I'm talking Newcastle and Richmond there. Um, but once we, the closer we get to 1 a.m., this thing's going to be out of our state. So now, there you go, and this is what I was afraid of. Okay. So and now we've got the radar confirmed, or this is a confirmed tornado warning. And I, we did get a little information from um, our own Jenny Runovich of a building collapse, Sean, um, in and around the Martinsville area and uh, reports of a tornado in progress near Fairland. There you um, go. Okay. And if you could do me a favor, because I can't see it on this little screen, uh, will you put my roads back on my radar? I've done something wrong. Okay. <laughs> While he does that, I'm going to get you caught up on, on where yeah, we pop have. Up. If you pop up, um, <clears throat> put links to behind her if you, if you guys can. Just put uh, put links to behind her. Okay, that's all right. Um, uh, but yeah, the the new information coming from our own uh, Jenny Runovich is that there was a building collapse um, near in and around the Martinsville area, and now a, um, a, a confirmed tornado uh, near the Fairland area. So we just want to make sure that you are in the safest part of your home, coming out of Johnson County, headed into Shelby County um, as this cell comes out of the New Whiteland and the Whiteland area and moves quickly off to the north and east. Uh, confirmed tornado warning uh, that goes into until midnight for uh, this area here from Johnson County into parts of Shelby County. So just please um, be weather aware. Uh, it is staying just north of Franklin and north of the Franklin College area, um, but is tracking quickly off to the north and east. Were you able to fix my mistake? Uh, not yet. Hang on. Okay, thank yeah. you. If you, want to, um, if you want to hop on links too. Yeah, can I do can that. do that. Yeah. Um, so we will, um, actually I don't know if I can do that from this computer. Um, We'll get you uh, caught up on where we where we have the storms and kind of a, a big view. Uh, this, as I remove the radar, you can see all of the warnings that we're dealing with now. A severe thunderstorm and tornado, confirmed tornado warnings. That new one uh, coming out of the Franklin area that's tracking very quickly off to the north and east. And, and several storm reports, Sean, coming in as well. Yeah, yeah, and you're good on links Thank one you now, very so much. you're you're welcome. Um, yeah, so yeah, we get numerous reports of uh, of damage. Unfortunately, uh, sounds like there may be. This is uh, in in Howard County. We may have an entrapment um, oh, due to a house collapse there. Um, yeah, and, that you know, was it's not not too surprising based on the radar imagery. It just just you hate to see it and um, so now we have to get through again that the strong yeah, the line itself is over Indianapolis over Greenwood and then we've got this this polygon that you see flashing on my screen there that's the confirmed tornado warning polygon um, of that same supercell that's been going for hours now um, and with or <clears throat> with or without tornado damage we still are going to get you know, we're still going to get pockets of destructive wind damage as well. It's just what could happen on this line and what we've seen is that we're, we, we get these pockets of uh, enhancement with the, with these ro you know, the rotation that can form. And that's uh, likely what happened in Kokomo. We, we were talking about that earlier, Angela. Um, the concern, so this, <coughs> so this is 1113. So you can see it over Rucheville. Remember we were talking yep. about that and it went right through and appears that there might have been a, sh a, a tightening of the rotation there. Yeah, and we were talking about, and Ashley, um, this is one area that we probably need to have the newsroom uh, continue to check on and, and maybe um, follow our, our, our friends up in Kokomo. And uh, it wasn't confirmed at the time, but we started to see a, a little bit of chatter on Twitter from the Kokomo Scanner um, account that there were perhaps a couple of buildings um, that, that had collapsed. Again, this is something that we're going to have crews um, look into. We'll be, make calls to Howard County, uh, but we do want to make sure that you know that severe threat is now impacting the eastern half of the state, and we've had several okay. areas of um, of damage. We're up to more than 20,000 Duke Energy customers without power, and we're not going to be done with this until about 1 a.m. The good news, we're getting closer to the end 
of this line of storms, but we still have an hour, hour and a half to go before this completely clears the state. Yeah. So we're going to do um, a bit of a reset. 70, near 70 mile per hour gust at the uh, International Airport. At the airport, so, okay. I mean, you know, doesn't matter if it's straight line went or if it's a point. I mean, just goes to show you that 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 can do some damage. And I, you know, we're going to get uh, the power outages are going to really start to ramp up. And oh, by the way, we're going to have high gust right. not thunderstorm gusts tomorrow. So. so we we say this again. If if you can, you know, take a minute while you're sitting watching our coverage or or getting ready to go to bed, make sure that cell phone is charged because we're going to have non severe thunderstorm wind gusts um, up over 50 miles per hour during the day tomorrow. All right, as promised, we'll do a reset. Let's go north and uh, pick up where we have uh, a couple of cells that we're monitoring east and northeast of Kokomo, one right over Marion, and then this little cluster that's approaching Hartford City. And let's check the velocities before we push south just to just to kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. Um, some inten intensification here with some velocities near Marion approaching Interstate 69. So let's keep a very close eye on this uh, cell in particular, right over Marion, tracking northeast. So Hartford City, it stays to your north, but uh, Marion, I would be in the safest part of, of my home and, and anywhere north of uh, Hartford City, so northern sections of Blackford County. Go ahead and, and you're under a severe thunderstorm warning, but as we've talked about most of the night, treat these as if they can produce tornadoes, and we have seen that happen. A uh, severe thunderstorm quickly go to a tornado warning, to a confirmed tornado warning in just minutes during our coverage this evening. Okay, let's go south of this line, uh, along the line. And uh, Muncie, threat for a couple of severe storms with what's approaching you from the west uh, into Anderson. Heavy rain right now over Noblesville and Fishers. These storms tracking northeast, so heads up Madison County um, into Delaware County, including Muncie. And then south, we've got the heavy rain coming out of downtown, headed into the eastern sections of Marion County at this point. And again, we'll check velocities here. And nothing looks overly impressive, although uh, some strong winds. Sean mentioned that wind gust almost 70 miles per hour out at the airport in Indianapolis. So potential with this line as it moves into the eastern part of Marion County. So heads up Acton, Castleton, Lawrence, we could be dealing with those wind gusts nearing 70 miles per hour. There are severe thunderstorm warnings along this line. And then we go south to the confirmed tornado warning that is uh, moving across uh, Shelby County at this point. So coming out of Johnson County over Shelby County uh, near the Sugar Creek area. So it is just now crossing I-74. And let's see if we can check uh, the shear detector, which might give us a, a better idea of, of what we're dealing with. And we still have these pockets of wind damage potential and or rotation. Sugar Creek back into Needham. So in this area from Needham over towards Shelbyville approaching Morristown, this is a confirmed tornado warning for you. Um, and then outside of that area is a severe thunderstorm warning and that confirmed tornado warning goes until midnight. Um, and at this point, that is our only, uh, as far as tornado confirmed and or otherwise, warning at this point. So uh, a, a little bit of good news. And as we were doing our analysis in advance of this event, uh, one thing we can look at with model data is where we have a significant tornado parameter. And it really looked lower across the eastern part of the state. So, Sean, we might be seeing these move into an environment that isn't as conducive to producing tornadoes, but we turn our attention more to that uh, damaging wind threat. Yeah, wind threat will continue. Uh, even that may uh, get minimized here um, on the far eastern. We knew at some point the atmosphere was going to stabilize enough to lessen the potential of wind and or tornadoes. We just didn't know exactly where it would take place. We always felt the western half of the state uh, would be more of the bullseye. Um, so yeah, so things are, if you live in Marion County, most of which, uh, at least if you live basically downtown and or points west, it's done. Severe, the severe show is over. Uh, everything's now on the east side of Marion County, so over Beach Grove, over Lawrence, 
Um, I suspect we're, you know, we're going to continue perhaps to see some pockets of near 70 mile per hour gust, if not a little bit stronger. Um, I was just checking, unfortunately, just checking in the uh, in the National Weather Service chat, and um, we, you know we're going to follow this up overnight into into sunrise um, about what's going on in Sullivan. That was with a, a confirmed tornado, um, but it sounds like that they're they're telling CSX down there to stop running trains because of gas leaks. Oh, no. So there, yeah, that's that, and that was with the big supercell. What's left of it now being ingested into the squall line, which is something we were hoping would happen sooner. Um, it was just moving so fast that it was able to tap into this, you know, tornado producing environment. Um, I, based on what mm -hmm. I'm seeing out of that cell right now, we're not seeing terribly strong rotation. But we're still seeing some some strong wind, and that's why um, that's why we're still have these pockets on the wind shear uh, where we're you know. And notice this goes from Nineveh. This is heading towards Shelbyville. So all within what you're seeing on Live Doppler 13 radar, all with all of this, um, is where we can get these near 70 plus mile per hour gust. And this go, look at look how far this extends mm -hmm. up. This is on the northern edge of the of the squall line uh, environment probably a little more favorable south um, and then you can see it's not as strong but still noticeable there once you get behind this line that you're seeing uh, this the, the threat of severe weather is over and now it's just uh, an idea of going into more of a and so here's this tornado warning so this includes Fairland this includes uh, Clover Village Freeport um, crossing, crossing 74 here, Bogstown, you're out of, you're, you're out of the uh, severe zone. Um, New Whiteland, Whiteland, Franklin, the severe threat um, to your east now. Yeah, I have a feeling, Sean, we're going to have a few areas to get to tomorrow. Uh, one being Kokomo, the other being Martinsville, and then Sullivan that you mentioned as well, uh, just to to survey damage, to make sure everyone's okay, to you know really see what what happened tonight because it's yeah. dark. And Angie, and, and, and I apologize. No, I, no, go ahead. Uh, I had this map and I meant to call it up. So this is uh, this is power outage map here. <clears throat> now, please understand that we know in Marion County there's power outages. It, it'll take a little bit for this to um, to fill in, but. Over 5,000 in Sullivan County. Mm. Um, yeah, give me just a second here. Yeah, and AES reported almost 500 in Marion County. Yeah, so uh, we we know mm. that 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 is definitely uh, definitely the case here. So just just hang, well, it's not uh, behaving for me right now. Well, we, you're mentioning though power outages, Sean. Yeah. Um, good thing to keep in mind. It's dark. And if you don't yeah. have to be on the roads, don't because you're not going to be able to see trees down power lines down and if you would come across a power line down you must treat it as if it is live so and that's obviously very difficult to see in the middle of the night when it's dark yeah. even at first light tomorrow morning um, you're just going to have to be aware that we have a large area uh, with a high impact storm system that looks like it's done a fair amount of damage and we may still be in that cleanup process yeah. most likely will be during the day tomorrow. And uh, Scott Swan uh, just tweeted this out. Thankfully, he handed my his phone here. <laughs> uh, Twenty over twenty seven thousand Duke Energy mm. uh, near three thousand Howard near three thousand Sullivan near five thousand in Johnson County and over six in six thousand in Morgan County. So our map uh, will will update. So but the idea is that you can see. I mean, we're we're talking you know tens thousands. These yeah. numbers are going to climb. We know that for sure. Um, and the game is not over, if you will. The uh, severe weather threat is not over east of uh, Indianapolis. So it will be in about an hour. Okay. Just because of how fast these things are moving. But um, we'll see what kind of shape they're in when they get to Connersville, when they get to Richmond, uh, on right there in Muncie now. Um, you know, they'll be there in the next five, ten minutes and uh, over Anderson now. So we'll see what kind of shape they're in when they arrive there. 
Um, but still, yeah, you, you know, still seeing, and there's the, there's the wind report. That, uh, that, that wind report, by the way, nearly 70 miles per hour at the International uh, Airport. So the, the threat over Indianapolis um, is, is done now. But basically east of this line that we're showing you, I'll, I'll turn the lightning on. Um, most of what we were doing earlier was more wind related, but Hartford City, Anderson, and um, over Shelbyville now, and Morristown points east. Yeah, so I would say that, you know, the, the timeline really looks like it's going to yep. verify as yep. far as the severe threat ending in the next hour as it is beginning to shift into the eastern part of the state. But we don't want you to let your guard down. Do know eastern half of the state we're dealing with, was it 27,000 or up over 30? Yeah. Um, as far as power outages go. Um, and over 30,000 power outages at this point. So just be aware that threat is now coming your way with uh, the damaging wind potential of 70 miles per hour and still that possibility that we could have a quick spin up of a tornado that we've seen uh, what appears to be several times this evening during our coverage uh, from Kokomo to near uh, the Martinsville area and then south to Sullivan. We're going to have several areas we think of of damage and uh, for us to survey and for the National Weather Service to to survey as well, figure out was it straight line wind or mm -hmm. tornadoes? But you know, during our coverage, we talked about this, Sean. It really didn't matter if if we were dealing with straight line winds at 70 miles per hour. That's low end tornado strength. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter what yeah, does I mean, the damage. And that's yeah, that's what we've tried to to stress. And arguably that because it was going to be a line eventually, that straight line would probably impact more areas. Um, it's just boy, we got that. You know, we got that um, that supercell, mm, and yeah. that was uh, that was the bugaboo, unfortunately. But yeah, so this is uh, estimate of 65 mile per hour gust there in um, near Avon. That was from 11:40. Um, I did get a report of a little bit of hail in the Castleton area okay. as that kind of cell moved in, uh, in the eastern Marion County. Yeah. So yeah. And so here come the new thunderstorm warnings that are that are now in place, going all the way to the Ohio state line. Um, let's uh, let's see if we're seeing any en enhancement here. We'll use our shear rate product to kind of it, to pick up on that. Yeah. So that what's crossing 74 there near Shelbyville that'll that'll put down some damage. Unfortunately, that'll yeah. knock some trees over. And Charlie, who we do tr trust on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, is reporting a row of power poles down along 31, one mile north of Franklin, um, yep. near the Franklin Police okay. Department. All right. So let's. Charlie, thanks for the info. So let's, so basically it's this, it's the same complex. It was the supercell that gets sucked up by the, the squall line. This is what moved through Franklin. And that's what's over, that's what is moving through Shelby County right now. So that'll be enough to do some damage. We'll, we'll get additional power poles down, unfortunately. Um, we'll get tree damage out of this until we see otherwise on, on the ra on radar. Now that is the strongest, um, it, based on the line that we're seeing in the analysis, that seems to be the strongest wind shear, strongest wind uh, that we're seeing on the, uh, on the line for the time being. That, that could change. If you're, we still have, until it can get it to your east Muncie, until it can get to your east Newcastle, you still need to probably treat these. If you live around a lot of trees, um, I would suggest treat these you know, like a tornado warning until this thing can get to your east and it'll do so here easily in the next uh, 60 minutes. Uh, okay, let's do uh, a quick reset and I've got some video the, um, from downtown Indianapolis, the heart of Marion County where we had just sheets of rain blowing across the area. You can see the strong winds and the heavy rain. We've had lots of lightning and we're up to uh, just over 500 AES customers without power. So here's my time to remind you to make sure that your cell phone is charged. We're going to be dealing with non severe thunderstorm winds tomorrow that may exceed 50 miles per hour. So even though the severe threat is going to end by 1 a.m. as the storms move out, the backside of this storm system, very powerful high impact storm system, is still going to produce some winds that could exceed 50 miles per hour. And also want to remind you, 
you're going to need to treat every power line as if it is live. And it sounds like we had enough wind to bring down power lines, to bring down trees. There's going to be damage. There's going to be stuff that you're going to have to work around as you get out and start your weekend tomorrow. And keeping in mind that we could have additional trees and power lines come down with those strong winds. Uh, promise to reset. This is live Doppler 13 radar showing the heavy rain and storms from Fort Wayne south to Bloomington. Although Bloomington, you've got some heavy rain moving back in. That threat for severe weather is now across the eastern part of the state. And we're going to give you several close up views and we'll start north along Interstate 69 and monitor these storms that are over Hartford City now and approaching Muncie. So here you can see Hartford City and Muncie, Anderson to Pendleton, Fortville. What you see Muncie approaching you, strongest part where we could end up with some damaging wind gusts at this point. And that really has been uh, what we've been monitoring, the damaging winds and that uh, severe wind potential, 60, 70 miles per hour. And as we put the shear detector on, picking up a few spikes here, in that line from Hartford City approaching Muncie. So take shelter, be in the safest part of your home until this storm pushes east of you uh, across Delaware County. And that's as fast as these are moving. It's not going to take very long. These should clear the state in the next half hour or so as they move off to the east 60 70 miles per hour heads up portland winchester mount pleasant and newcastle you will be next wind damage potential with this line that is approaching muncie let's go south and here's the area um, from knightstown so we're just east of greenfield so knightstown carthage morristown uh, Shelbyville approaching Rushville. Uh, this little complex does have a history of wind damage, so take this storm seriously. You are under warnings, Rushville, and this storm is five minutes away, probably at, at most. Heads up Cambridge City and Connorsville, Liberty and Richmond, economy. As we get into the eastern part of our viewing area, the eastern part of the state, uh, these storms will move your way. Heavy rain, lots of lightning and the potential for damaging winds. Let's check the, the shear detector here as well. And again, these little spikes that we're picking up from Knightstown to Carthage to Morristown approaching Rushville indicates uh, where we have that uh, area of potentially damaging winds. And then south will go into, um, we'll pick up the southern extent of this line, uh, pushing now just east of Shelbyville. And that's probably, this area here is most likely uh, the strongest um, that we're picking up as far as the, the shear detector goes, and most likely where we have the, the greatest threat of some damaging winds. And you can see this cluster of storms from Rushville, approaching Rushville to just northwest of Hope. There are severe thunderstorm warnings in advance of this complex of storms. And as we've talked about, severe thunderstorm warnings and a tornado watch Oftentimes the sirens will sound. That was the case in Marion County as this line of storms moved through with some gusty winds, had a wind gust of almost 70 miles per hour in uh, at the airport in Indianapolis. Some small hail reported on the northeast side of Marion County into the Castleton area. I did get a picture of a carport that was basically just came down um, and I, I, I tweeted back at him to ask for his location, but but didn't get back to me. But Okay, so we're getting some new information out of Johnson County. Um, this is going to be the near the new Whiteland and Whiteland area. Um, Ashley, our producer that's been in the booth all night long, kind of communicating with the counties and um, and the newsroom where we have a couple of several people, in fact, on the desk gathering information that we've got some buildings or homes perhaps collapsed and perhaps some people trapped and can't get to them because of power lines down. Uh, and we did share that report from um, our friend Charlie uh, on, on Twitter that basically said uh, near the Franklin area there were power lines like down over roads near the police department there. So this is the Johnson County area south of Indianapolis. This was the storm that we basically tracked um, from Sullivan into Martinsville into Johnson County and now it appears perhaps we're going to have another area to survey during the day tomorrow and unfortunately uh, perhaps some folks um, trapped due to uh, buildings that are collapsed or homes that have had damage and the fact that 
emergency folk having trouble getting to them because of all of the power lines down. And, and we knew the wind damage was going to be a, a real issue. And now we're starting to see that with damage reports coming in and, and potentially serious situations setting up across several of our areas from Kokomo uh, south into Johnson County. Martinsville is another area that we're going to be focused on and Sullivan, Sean, with this area. Yep. Yeah, in fact, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. Got uh, just got a report out uh, at the AES 2100. That number is going to balloon. Um, so this is, I, I just tweeted this radar imagery out. Basically, this, this line of storms will cross our state. You know, I say will because it's still in eastern Indiana um, in about three to three and a half hours of time. So wow. speeds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Uh, unfortunately, we know that there are pockets of not only damage, but uh, when light comes up tomorrow, there's going to be probably some significant swaths of damage, either tornado uh, and or straight line wind. And so this thing is unfortunately the timing is played out. Um, still continue to have severe thunderstorm warnings. Um, the worst is over. So for cleanup efforts in Franklin and Greenwood, at least for right now, the worst is over. Say at least for right now, because the, here's what's going to be a problem as we get into tomorrow. Um, and and I would argue, you know, we're going to have we're going to have big wind issues tomorrow. It won't come from thunderstorms. It's going to come mm -hmm. from the storm system itself. Now that's something we'll have to you know really think about here tomorrow. When these power crews are going to try to get out here, and you know, folks are going to try to get some plant. We're going to have gust easily. Uh, over 50 miles per hour tomorrow at times and maybe not constant, but it's going to be windy all day start to finish, but we're going to have gusts at times over 50 miles per hour. Even that would have caused power outages. Um, so because we have a wet ground, we may get into a situation where the numbers may uh, either hold steady tomorrow or go up even higher in terms of power outages within central Indiana. Uh, with that said, let's uh, let's work around with live Doppler 13 radar here as we continue our coverage. Um, so we've got uh, severe thunderstorm warnings that uh, include Rushville. This goes until 1245 technically. Dive in with live Doppler 13 radar. This line of storms, by the way, uh, is one that's had the history of producing damage. Now I think what's going to happen in Johnson County, it's probably going to be a combination of that supercell that we were really mm -hmm. concerned about. And we tried to give everyone a heads up on that and also from the line itself. It's going to be a combination from both of those. But uh, what's over eastern Shelby County now, what's over Rushville, what's over Knightstown, this is uh, the line that's moved through. That's, uh, that's prompted uh, the uh, severe thunderstorm warning here. Uh, shear rates, you can see the, the strongest there within that just south of Shelbyville, moving into Rushville now over Knightstown. This is going to hit uh, Spiceland. So this gonna, it's going to move through uh, Newcastle here in the next five minutes. And the worst is just about over uh, four months. And that'll be moving into Winchester here. And then after that, again, now we transition. And I, you know, I, you know easily by 1 a.m. this stuff's going to be over in Ohio just based on how fast it's going, Angela. But then we transition to uh, cleanup and then having to deal with a really, really strong non-thunderstorm wind tomorrow um, that's going to be wrapping around the backside of this uh, intense uh, low pressure system. And so I think that is going to, that's going to cause some issues. Yeah, and, and it's always so unfortunate. It's unfortunate any time, but when it's dark, and yep. it's raining and you're trying to survey whatever has whatever has hit your neighborhood. Um, it's even more dangerous when it's dark out because you can't see. So we need to make sure that we treat every power line as if it's live. Uh, we're going to need to work around roads that might be blocked or closed because of trees and power lines down. We're going to need to to give room to emergency crews to get in and um, get people out if they need to be out 
or simply help folks start the cleanup process. We're going to need to make room for uh, power crews to get in and fix lines that might be down. So we're all going to need to, to have some extra patience in the coming days and, and stay away from the areas that may have damage from tonight's storms. Uh, one other reminder, we're nearing, if not over 30,000 Duke Energy customers without power. If you're lucky enough to have power, you need to make sure that cell phone is charged because as Sean mentioned, we're going to be dealing with non-severe thunderstorm wind gusts over 50 miles per hour on a saturated ground. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all of this rain today, that additional power outages are possible during the day tomorrow. And most likely, we're going to have several areas of cleanup tomorrow whether they be from uh, tornadoes or straight line wind damage. And we had cautioned you that those individual cells would have the best chance. Uh, they'd be in that environment where they could continue to produce a tornado. And in fact, it looked like uh, that did happen from Sullivan impacting the Ellettsville, Martinsville area into parts of Johnson County. And then as it got swept up into the line. And we also mentioned that as this line picked up forward speed, it would increase that wind damage threat. And unfortunately, it looks like uh, that that has happened across um, a good part of central Indiana. I do want to show you where we still have warnings. It's the eastern part of our viewing area now. So we're into Hartford City. That severe threat Hartford City is ending for you as this line approaches Portland, Winchester and Mount Pleasant. Now heavy rain right now at times raining sideways because of the strong winds Muncie for you um, and the, these storms are moving off to the east. We've got a cell over Newcastle now that's going to start to make its way into Wayne County. So economy Richmond heads up. That's going to move your way. Uh, let's check the um, that shear detector and we're getting these little spikes. Nothing that really, really, really stands out at this point, uh, but we do still have severe thunderstorm warnings going for Portland and Winchester south to Newcastle and then highlighted here. Let's go south and we'll uh, show you the tornado warning for this pocket here. Uh, that is a tornado warning that goes until 1245 for the small area north of Rushville. So just south of Spiceland and Knightstown, uh, just east of Carthage, uh, tornado warning until 1245. Let's check velocities here too. Um, so nothing really completely standing out, but perhaps a few pockets of rotation and that potential for some damaging winds in the area in Rush County, just north of Rush just north of Rushville at this point, uh, an intense storm moving through now. Heads up Connorsville, Columbia, eventually Liberty, uh, Abington, Cambridge City. These storms are moving your way in the next half hour or so. Um, let's go south along the line. We have severe thunderstorm warnings for you, Greensburg, Adams, uh, back through Hope, not under a warning, but we do have some heavy rain in that area. Um, into Columbus, into Bartholomew County. And again, these storms all tracking off to the north and east, uh, 60, 70 miles per hour. So they should clear the state here in the next half hour, 45 minutes. Um, I was watching some additional storms here um, back toward the Bedford area. And just want to check these. Uh, that severe threat will be diminishing and, and ending rather rapidly um, as we transition really into the cleanup phase of this uh, powerful storm system that impacted everyone from Iowa to Arkansas. And now central Indiana, unfortunately, is going to have most likely several areas of cleanup to do during the day tomorrow. So make sure that if you come across power lines or uh, trees over the road, find another way to go. We need to make sure we get emergency crews into where they need to go. And if you do have to travel in the dark, that's very, very difficult to see. So just be prepared. We're going to have several areas of cleanup and damage, unfortunately, due to tonight's storms. The piece of good news, this is going to end pretty rapidly here, Sean, in the next half hour, 45 Yeah, and minutes. I apologize. I was doing multiple things. So That's if you, okay. If you and I don't even have to go to you. I can keep talking. No, if, you're doing no, if you mentioned the, the new tornado warning, I do apologize. <laughs> I did. That's okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, also I want to um, talk about... It just looked a little disorganized. I couldn't really see any significant area yeah, in it's, the, it's 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 yeah, kind of small and it is it is it is a very small it's in, it looks like it's in between Carthage and, and Rushville yeah perhaps so that warning goes until 1245 let's make sure so yeah you can see it right there so it's it's a, it's a small uh, tornado warning polygon within 
uh, this severe thunderstorm warning. Um, either way, let me get in here a little closer. So, yeah, and it looks like it's, it, is, it is weakening a little bit, but if you live around Sexton, um, definitely take your, your, your safe spots, your precautions. I also want to pass along, this is from the Whiteland Police Department Twitter account. Uh, this came in about six minutes ago, and this would, I think this would coincide with what we were talking about earlier this evening. Um, preliminary reports indicating the southern part of town took a direct hit. Power communication limited. Mm. If you need help, cannot get out via police. Uh, they're utilizing the text to 911. So I say that. Oh, wow. I want to take this back. I want to take uh, live Doppler 13 radar back. <laughs> And so if you remember, we were, we were very concerned about that supercell. And we had mentioned it when it was over Bartersville um, because it, you could tell that the rotation was tightening up. So that's right around 1130. And we're being told there's about 4,000 outages within that particular area. So here we are at 1130. Let's, I'm gonna get in a little closer here. So. Yeah, so there's New Whiteland, there's Whiteland. And then as we play through, you can see right there. So that's 1135. Look at that. The rotation went right over the southern portion of where the, uh, the police department was talking about. Okay. So, um, yeah, now we've got, um, let's get back to real time here with live Doppler 13 radar. And, and again, if you, I mean, the, you know, stunning how quickly, and we, we talked about it, but how quickly it was going to, to move through the state. Um, three, three and a half hours, that's all, that's all it took. And here we are as we are just about 15 minutes after, after midnight, and this bad boy is almost out of uh, Channel 13 viewing area, mm -hmm. almost out of uh, the state of Indiana. Um, so we've got a few more warnings to get through. Get, get back in here just to make sure we're not getting any any uh, debris signatures, and I'm not seeing anything. So this is this is radar. Um, so just to kind of go back, rate there's we can have multiple types of tornado warnings. Some are radar confirmed. Uh, this one is radar uh, indicated rotation, and so we're seeing just a little bit. Not uh, it certainly pales in comparison to what we had earlier this evening. But as you notice, there are a couple frames back, starting to tighten up a little bit. Uh, but as, as it stands right now, nothing overly concerning that we've got something that's, that's in progress. But with that said, if you're east of this area until it can get through, <clears throat> you need to be watching it. And you're still under a severe thunderstorm warning. That includes Cambridge City. Uh, that includes um, Richmond. And that includes uh, Fountain City. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the latest right now. We've got... Probably, let's do a track on this. Let's do a track on this line. The worst over for Muncie now in terms of you know, weather, not necessarily wind. We'll get into those issues tomorrow. But let's take this, uh, this, whole, comp this whole line. And we'll move it east at uh, near 70. And there you go. So um, that's, only, that's only within the next 20 minutes. We can start adding some more towns to this. Connorsville to be there in less than 10. Okay. Um, Cambridge City, um, less than five, and it's gonna be over uh, ha Hagerstown momentarily. So we think we have about another uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes until, until the severe threat ends for most of central yeah. Indiana. Yeah. We're getting reports of 40,000 Duke Energy customers without power. We can't stress this enough. If you're one of the lucky ones that still has power, now's the time to charge that cell phone. Uh, we're all going to need to be aware that it may take us longer to get where we're going tomorrow because of several areas of damage. We, Sean mentioned the one in Johnson County and near the New Whiteland area. Uh, we're getting damage reports up into Kokomo, some damage reports coming out of Sullivan. So there are going to be several areas where uh, it, we've got cleanup. And if, if that's a route you've got to take, you may have to reroute. And it's a good idea to stay out of those areas, even if, even if you want to help to let the emergency uh, crews and folks do what they need to do to get uh, power back on, to get uh, people safe if, if in fact, um, 
they need that as well. And uh, it's, it's just, it's going to take us a while to assess what has happened tonight and, and realize that, that we're going to have some, some damage, unfortunately, yeah. to clean up um, in the coming days. Yeah, they can't, so they canceled the uh, tornado warning. Um, and I'm just doing a, you know, this is kind of a broad brush on our map that will continually update. So please know that these figures, but the overall arching idea is that we're what you know we're we're over 50,000 in our viewing area without power right now and this will be a north south east west deal this is uh this is this won't be you know we were hoping we might have pockets of damage or pockets of power outages and, and unfortunately that just is not going to be the case uh, the eastern half of the state's going to start adding to this map and unfortunately um, 24 hours from now because of how windy it will be tomorrow we're probably still going to be seeing tens of thousands um, without power mm. and maybe some areas that didn't you know get impacted by the you know high wind or uh, what have you but uh, we've got a you know we, we got a long stretch run here over the next 24 and uh, for some areas going to be much longer than that yeah and and we talked about this all week long that this was going to be a high impact storm we had targeted this day as a day to be weather aware uh, we watched storm initiation across parts of iowa we saw tornadoes do um, just a massive amount of damage in Little Rock, Arkansas. And then that line kind of came together and moved across central Indiana during the hours of between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. So to think that it moved across our entire state in a matter of a few hours um, as that line intensified and sped up, really increase that wind damage threat and mentioned that yes we've got some pockets of higher damage but Sean's right this is a widespread event for central Indiana with a lot of cleanup and a lot of folks without power and if we can just kind of keep that in mind that we may see additional power outages tomorrow not associated with thunderstorms but on the back side of this powerful storm system with winds gusting over 50 miles per hour. Here's what's left of the line of storms pushing now into the far eastern part of the state. So we'll go north to south to show you the storms that are, are left at this point with still damaging winds a threat. Um, and right now we're east of Hartford City. Uh, we're still into rain and, and some wind. Hartford City, uh, Marion, Alexandria. But that threat for damaging winds pushing into Portland and really approaching the Ohio State line at this point, the Indiana-Ohio line, and then back through Winchester into east of Mount Pleasant, Newcastle, now entering the northwestern sections of Wayne County with still that potential for some damaging winds. So we're going to add to that power outage map. Uh, the good news, we're not seeing the big spikes, but still weak rotation that could indicate some damaging winds from Portland into Winchester along 27 in our eastern viewing area. We'll keep this view on and then go south. Um, and what we're looking for, any other little like peaks or spikes and really not seeing that until we get uh, way south into um, and that's going to be out of our viewing area so or well technically it's for sales so for sales little peak of wind here for you um, in Ripley County so Osgood to Versailles in the far southeastern part of the state we still have a, a couple of storms that bear watching at this point um, but this is how radar looks and you can see the intensity there over Ripley County these will continue to track southeast towards Cincinnati Non-severe, but you still have some rain, the Greensburg area, and we'll go north and show you that line approaching Connorsville. So what's left, Newcastle, Richmond, Connorsville, uh, Liberty, and Brookville. These storms will move quickly through your area in the next 20 minutes or so. And our timeline for this coming to an end at about 1 a.m., uh, pretty much on point. And then we're going to transition into cleanup and assessing damage from a, a high impact storm that brought tornadoes, wind gusts to 70 miles per hour or more, a significant amount of power outages, and um, 
and unfortunately we've, we're going to have some some cleanup to do in the coming days. Uh, but this is what's left of the line of storms. There are severe thunderstorm warnings in our eastern viewing area. No tornado warnings at this point. Those those have ended and I and I believe at this point that for, for the most part that threat is over. Uh, we'll watch that Versailles area in Ripley County that by far was the strongest storm. Uh, but what's left will exit our state in the next 10 20 minutes or so and we'll start to uh, quiet things down as far as storms go. But on the back side of this system, 50 mile per hour wind gusts during the day tomorrow could lead to additional power outages. And we're going to continue our team coverage through the weekend. So we'll be out in neighborhoods that have sustained damage, making sure you're aware of, of areas to avoid and, um, and making sure that those folks uh, get obviously the help they need to start that cleanup process, Sean. Yep, yep, and um, you know, Chuck and, uh, and or, uh, Kelly have been tweeting out essentially what you were saying is that, um, I mean, we're, we're pushing 50,000 Duke. Um, let me see my last check here on our AA, AAS. It was over five. It's probably gone up now. Um, yeah, it's still, still over five, but like 5,100 Duke. Um, Duke is approaching, uh, it's over 40. So, yeah, and I, I suspect those numbers will continue to go up overnight tonight. We've got uh, several areas, um, Sullivan, New Whiteland, there's probably going to be several areas within Johnson County. We've got uh, around Kokomo, mm -hmm. um, based on radar, we know, we know there's been multiple tornadoes uh, within our viewing area here tonight and still uh, technically have severe thunderstorm warnings. Um, that are that are on, that are ongoing right now. The sh you know, when we look at the live Doppler 13 radar, we're not seeing nearly the the higher velocities. Um, we still want you to, if you're under a warning, to take it serious until it can get out of the state here in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, um, and then everything everything will transition to the cleanup that will continue overnight tonight. Um, and into tomorrow and, and we'll wait and see what happens when we do get into to daylight. Yeah, especially, I, you know, especially that supercell that that went through Illinois and cut through Sullivan and that was the one that was long track. Yeah, and even outside of that area, um, Ashley just giving a, a new report from the gas city area of a home that collapsed on a homeowner. Um, and then some damage reports coming out of the Swayze area. So this, I, I've taken radar close. Here's Gas City, so it's in parts of Grant County and Blackford counties. This area here, we're starting to hear of some reports of some damage, of um, some homes that were damaged, perhaps uh, on a homeowner and uh, near uh, the Gas City and Swayze area. Those storms are now, let's expand the view and slide it east. Those storms are now um, about to the state line, basically on the state line. So our threat uh, is ending, but unfortunately some additional cleanup uh, occurring perhaps in the Swayze and Gas City area. So just be aware, Winchester, we've got that line of storms with a history of wind damage that's over you now. Uh, Newcastle into Economy and Richmond, Hagerstown into Cambridge City, Richmond, you're going to be next in the next 10 minutes or so with this line of storms with the potential for some additional damaging wind gusts and um, to the south, let's let's hit up Connorsville. So Connorsville, Liberty, uh, again another 10, 20 minutes for you before these completely clear the state. Uh, Greensburg, we've got um, some storms overhead. Nothing at this point that looks um, tornadic, but still exists that potential for wind damage uh, with the what's left of the line of storms that moves now across the eastern part of the state. And we can't um, really stress this enough. It's dark. If you don't have to be out in the middle of the night, it's best not to. Very difficult to see trees and power lines that might be down. Very difficult to, to see damage that you might come up on. Um, we had I-65 near the Remington area north of Lafayette uh, blocked and closed at times tonight because of semis blown over. Um, thousands and thousands without power and this is going to continue to be a concern even through the day tomorrow with 50 mile per hour wind gusts on the backside of this storm system. So we still have a ways to go, 
before we're completely in the clear. Now, in terms of the severe storms and these warnings, another 10, 20 minutes, they're going to clear the state and we're going to start to settle things down. Our coverage tonight will end eventually, but our team coverage as a whole really just beginning as we will be out surveying neighborhoods that have that have damage. We're going to continue to bring those reports. Sunrise gets underway at six o'clock in the morning, uh, about five and a half hours from now. So we will have team coverage on sunrise and then we'll know more once the sun comes up where we end up with most likely, as Sean pointed out, widespread damage uh, from north to south across the state with these pockets of concentrated um, higher level damage because of perhaps that supercell that moved through Sullivan County into Martinsville, into Johnson County, and confirmed tornadoes that hit parts of the Kokomo area. So just be aware that our team coverage will just, well, it continues now, but it really is just beginning. will take us through sunrise tomorrow and all weekend long, and this is something that we'll be monitoring the National Weather Service as well. They'll get out and survey damage just from what we've seen on radar, uh, the debris signatures and those confirmed tornado warnings a lot of this is going to be tornado damage, but widespread outside of those pockets, a large area of us dealing with wind damage tonight, Sean. Yep, absolutely. And uh, so that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's the scene there. Um, boy, I just updated the AES map, by the way. Uh, almost 15,000 now, so uh, not, not a surprise at all. So now we're, now we're over 50,000. For, for the whole event, uh, at least at this point in time. Uh, as we uh, get ready, get you ready here, we're coming up on 12.30 a.m. We have uh, followed this line from, from Illinois. We'll follow, you, the team followed it all week long to get you ready for uh, what just happened. And um, this is, what's, this is uh, what's left, basically. Put some lightning data back on, and that's one thing. You know, we're not getting a lot of lightning out of this. So, we knew that it would run out of gas at some point in terms of producing severe wind. And it looks, you know, we just weren't for sure exactly when that was going to, um, but we're, we're getting less of lightning uh, strikes right now, uh, less in terms of the real peak shear rate indications. But as we go back through time, you can certainly see, let me take the lightning data off here as we just do a, do a recap. And you can see when we were, when we started our coverage for the tornado warnings that were that were issued for uh, northwest Indiana, or at least northwestern portions of our viewing area, um, Angela correctly was pointing out this cell across south central, uh, southeastern Illinois, and that uh, that we knew that was the one to cause some big time problems if it held together, and unfortunately that was that was the case, and then. You can see this is the one that was long track, and that's the one that caused uh, damage, getting some, starting to see some damage out of Martinsville. And then we've got a swath of damage we know that's, that's cut through uh, portions of uh, Johnson County. And that was with that supercell. And I suspect we'll get some damage too um, uh, across Marion County. So live Doppler 13 radar right now uh, severe thunderstorm warning. If you're, you know, there's just a few areas left. This is almost out of our viewing area. It's uh, right on your doorstep there in Richmond. It'll be there. It'll be there in less than five minutes. And uh, let's look at our. Still probably going to get, you know, over 60 plus wind with it. So that means additional additional power outages. You can see the swath of wind reports. On the northern side of the the storm is what you know that that was the line, and that's what produced the damage around and, and through parts of Howard County. It's what's done some damage around Marion Gas City, as Angela addressed. But you can see this is a long track, and that uh, that had prompted the tornado warnings initially. You can see the tornado um, icons there in northeastern uh, Illinois, east central Illinois, if you will, and so that's what um, we have two distinct areas where we had the rotation. Now, we're not seeing any storm reports per se over Sullivan County, but we know that there's been significant damage, uh, unfortunately, uh, in Sullivan County. And so there's a lot of areas uh, that are gonna have to be covered um, for in terms of storm surveys. 
Weather Service will definitely have their, uh, their work cut out for them. I suspect they will, they will probably have multiple survey teams. Uh, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to take um, <laughs> multiple survey teams, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, again, damage reports continue to come in. I'd love to be able to share them all, but we haven't confirmed them. So I'm going to pass them on to the newsroom. Uh, but just know that we're efforting some pictures of some of the damage that's in the Martinsville area and uh, the, the threat for severe wind now across the far eastern part of the state and will exit in the next 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. And really we turn our attention to recovery and cleaning up and, and helping the communities that, are, that were hard hit. Okay, well, we are ready then to share you, share with you some of the photos that we're getting from the Martinsville area. Again, it's dark. Folks are now dealing with damage and cleanup. And okay, so that obviously is a church. And look at the top yep. of that. And I mean, we're talking a brick church here. And the damage that we're seeing mm. with, you know, not something that was poorly constructed, but brick. Oh, wow. Okay, so this again is in the Martinsville area. Pictures just coming in. What uh, appears to be uh, part of, uh, of a building that was on top of the Jeep. We're back to the church with damage at this point. Look to impact kind of the top or the steeple part of that church. Um, debris scattered uh, down on the bottom of the church and then into the road. Some of the bricks you can see there. And then um, our second picture, look to be um, some damage from perhaps roof or something from some of the other buildings that ended up on on a Jeep. So this is just one area of many. Uh, again, there's that area. Okay, so looks like part of a building or something, all of that debris blown over, um, covering that Jeep into, uh, well, again, this is in and around the Martinsville area. These pictures just coming in. And we're going to have pockets of that, yes, but this is going to be widespread all across central Indiana, several communities that, as I mentioned, yeah. we turn our attention from covering this severe event to helping communities clean up, assess the damage, make sure everyone is, is safe. And, and really, that's the reason we're here, is to make sure that you know what's coming and that, um, that you can get into the safest part of your home because of scenes like that. And that's just, Sean, a couple of pictures that yeah. uh, that are going to be probably hundreds by the time we're done. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got, so I've got radar. We're going back, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go back almost two and a half hours, uh, excuse me, about 90 minutes. So we're going back to around 11 p.m. Um, and if you remember during that time, I, th that's when the rotation was tightening up over Spencer. We did our best to kind of forewarn that this thing holds together you know, some of the areas that could be, you know, in, in the path of this. And so this is, this is there you go. There's Martinsville. Mm. And so there's the, there's the rotation right there. And that's what, you know, we'll see whether or not it was a tornado or straight line wind. You know, again, it doesn't, you know, th it doesn't matter right now. That'll be for statistics. Uh, but we know that that thing cut right through there. Yeah, and we were talking about that, you know, during during our coverage tonight when we would be, you know, pointing out storms that may be producing uh, high winds or tornado and the fact that a 70 mile per hour wind is essentially a low end tornado. It does similar damage. It just ends up, does your debris get blown in one direction or does it get blown in several directions? Yep. And, and that's how the National Weather Service is able to detect was it a tornado? Was it straight line? Is all of the debris blown in one direction or is it blown in several directions indicating that circulation or the rotation? And we found with several storms this evening that started off as severe thunderstorm warnings that quickly intensified into a, a rotating storm that went tornado warning to confirm tornado warning in a matter of minutes. So, uh, so it, and, and, th and that happened several times with the storms as they moved through central Indiana. The good news we see here on Live Doppler 13 radar, the majority of the storms are, are now below severe limits. We do have what's left here um, from Winchester to about Richmond. So it's this 
sell here um, in the eastern half of Wayne County. Once that clears the state, our severe threat is going to end, and we really do turn our attention to to clean up in the folks that have been hit hard. Uh, Connorsville and Liberty in our eastern viewing area, so in between those two towns, uh, Liberty, it's coming your way south to Blooming Grove, um, but this is it in terms of the threat of, of severe storms, and... Um, and unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's sad and kind of scary to see those pictures come in. And, and, and we know from what we saw on live Doppler 13 radar this evening that this is just going to be the beginning of cleanup for several of our communities in, in the coming days. Um, I'm going to have them pop up uh, N.2 here. Uh, our links to, yes, yeah, so this is, this is I-65 oh, wow. near Whiteland Road. Uh, Ashley, remind me of... Um, is it that we, we have flipped vehicles? I'm sorry, closed closed lanes due to storm damage. Okay. Um, which would jive with the supercell that uh, was long lived and um, produced multiple tornadoes. Again, whether or not it, it was still tornadoing, if you will, uh, we know it did some damage here. So. Um, yeah, and we do now have um, some additional confirmation. Again, we've, we've got reports. We're just waiting to confirm them, but we can report now from Howard County Emergency uh, Management. They're following up on a lot of damage reports. Uh, notably, a trailer overturned off of a State Road 26 in the southern part of the county. A man was pulled from debris. Injuries don't appear to be serious. Went to the hospital. Also, a lot of power lines down, lots of tree damage, uh, a garage collapsed, no one hurt there. Um, most of the damage coming from the southern part and the western part of that county along uh, State Road 26 seems to be some of the worst. Right now, out of Howard County, no major injuries reported so far. Uh, we showed you the damage coming from Martinsville, and we've got some unconfirmed reports of some additional damage um, in, in and around the Spencer area all because of that supercell. So that's the latest from Howard County with so many of our communities dealing with severe storms and, and damage and cleanup. It's going to take us uh, some time to get it all kind of ironed out and, and be able to report uh, everything that, that we do have confirmed. And it is widespread, unfortunately, ac across our area. So just stick with us. We're going to continue our coverage here tonight. And really, it's just the beginning of our team coverage that will continue into the weekend. As I mentioned, sunrise gets underway at 6 o'clock in the morning. In terms of severe storms, what we have left in the far eastern part of the state, uh, that's what's left in terms of uh, storms that may still be producing some damaging winds. Uh, but really, our focus is starting to turn to clean up assessing damage and really to be making sure that everyone is, is okay. Obviously, having somebody pulled from a semi, having um, a building collapse on top of a homeowner, uh, these are, are, are serious situations that our emergency crews are dealing with at this hour in the dark, in the middle of the night. So if we can uh, allow them some extra courtesy and extra space and room to do their job and, and not be on the roads going into these damaged areas, let them do their job so that uh, we can make sure that everyone is safe on what ended up um, a, a very dangerous uh, Friday night, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's, we've got, is uh, a photo or a, a video, Ashley? All right, so this is a viewer photo uh, this is near Franklin. Do we know what time that was taken? Okay. And do we know who's submitting that? Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if that, uh, if that jazz is... Um, uh, Looks like the courtesy is Brian Harris. Okay. up in the right-hand part okay. of the screen. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have to be careful, <laughs> obviously, yeah. with, with photos and stuff that, that are submitted to make sure that, that, that <clears throat> it actually is an accurate photo, yeah. that it matches the timestamp of when we know those storms rolled through, which is the reason I've seen a lot on Twitter that I can't share with you yeah. yet. Uh, just because it's not confirmed, and that's why we have a group of people in the newsroom uh, making calls, reaching out to emergency managers and police departments and fire departments. But we also realize that they're busy. They're busy cleaning up. 
they're busy in their communities making sure everyone is safe. So it is going to take us some time as well to get accurate information confirmed to you. So just bear with us, be patient. Uh, we're going to get you all that you that you do need to know, especially if you're one of those hard hit communities uh, cleaning up. And, and it appears that we're going to have um, a lot of them. The damage is widespread from damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour or more. And what most likely will end up being perhaps Sean, a handful of tornadoes. Uh, oh, without without question. Um, there's without a doubt on that. Uh, just looking at the latest uh, outages here. Uh, around 15,000 right now for uh, AES. Still over 40,000 total uh, for Duke. Got a got several big concentrations. Not surprisingly, uh, Johnson County. Uh, Morgan County, Marion County, that 5,000 number is too low, but it'll, it'll update, but the, you get the gist here. Um, over 5,000 in Sullivan County, and that's the long track uh, supercell that, that caught our attention when it was in Illinois and made the uh, progress. We, I also was checking, we've got, uh, had some damage reports. Um, you mentioned your sales earlier. Uh, had some damage down there. Milan had some damage. Um, Delaware County reporting um, multiple trees, power lines down countywide. A roof partially blown off in, uh, in Albany as the line moved through. The severe threat, for the most part, um, is just about over for uh, WTHR viewing area. Yeah, and, and our co it. yeah our coverage started at 9:30. I was just kind of looking back. Um, so we're you know into three hours of coverage, yeah. and it took about three hours. That's it that for it. this impressive line three of storms to move from west to east. Our coverage started with the uh, initial tornado warning for White County, uh, and then we had embedded in the line of storms uh, these pockets. Um, well, I'm going to say I'm say say pockets, but it's going to end up being more widespread than just a few pockets of wind damage, um, and then uh, embedded in that line with the wind damage uh, several tornadoes so it is going to take us some time and we never put crews out in advance of storms like this so we were talking about this during our afternoon meeting as we were preparing for tonight's events that our crews would have to go in after the fact so that's where we will go next where we are now just starting to get in some viewer pictures and we'll eventually, when it's safe, send our crews into the damage areas. But if you're in one of those areas that's hard hit, we also don't want you going out in the middle of the night just to get us a couple of pictures. We want you to make sure that you're safe, uh, especially in those areas that have damage and where cleanup is underway and assessment is underway and emergency crews are in and trying to help you out. So obviously that, that's most important. Uh, when we get to a safe place, maybe daylight, and, and it's possible, Send us your pictures, send us your videos, but, but only if you can do it safely. Uh, the severe threat is ending for central Indiana. Last warning for the far eastern part of the state, and that's going to be uh, for the Richmond area, and uh, that will be the last of the warnings for us, and that severe threat ends pretty quickly. Uh, right now, we've got the storms from Richmond to Liberty to Brookville, so another 5, 10 minutes, and then this completely clears the state, and really, we turn our focus to the communities that are in cleanup mode at this point. And you just feel not only are you dealing with damage and um, a scary situation, but it's dark. It's in the middle of the night and, um, and it, it, it's just unfortunate that it, that it happens. And, and this is the second Friday in a row where we're dealing with severe weather. Last Friday night it was Mississippi, uh, a deadly tornado with more than deadly tornadoes with more than 20 people killed. Um, and we may end up with fatalities, I, and I haven't had a chance to look since we've been on the air, but a powerful uh, tornado hit the Little Rock area. There were powerful tornadoes in eastern Iowa. This kind of came together and, um, and moved our way, obviously, in about a three-hour time span uh, from west to east between 9.30 p.m. and now as we enter the... Um, almost 1 a.m. And, and, and timeline is going to end up being pretty accurate. It's clearing the state now. Our threat for severe weather diminishes. So we focus on communities hard hit with damaging winds and tornadoes. 
Uh, lots of debris out there as cleanup gets underway. A and a couple of reminders. We must treat every power line as if it's live. Uh, if you come across trees, power lines on a road, I know it's the weekend. You're going to have places to go. You're going to have things to do. It just may take you longer to get where you're going uh, because of the widespread damage that we're dealing with. And we need to give crews space and time to get in to clean up, at least start that cleanup process, that assessment process to make sure everyone in our community is um, safe and accounted for uh, because we are getting confirmed. Uh, reports of, of damage, of, of houses coming down on homeowners, of buildings collapsing. So it is going to take time. And if we can just um, extend a little grace to those folks that are going to be out overnight and in the coming days cleaning up, and, and helping those clean up, it's just going to make that go um, a, a little faster. Uh, if you're still one of the lucky ones with power, make sure that cell phone is charged. Uh, you're going to need it because on the back side of this storm system, we've got 50 mile per hour wind gusts with a saturated ground. We may have additional power outages tomorrow that won't be associated with um, with wind damage. Um, Ashley, anything else yep, as far you. as coming in? You've got some stuff. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, and I'm going to pick up where you would. I just want to pick up real quickly to talk about this for tomorrow or today, if you will. So this is the wind gust forecast and we're at 7 a.m. And we're well over 40 miles per hour and there's going to be parts of the day where we're going to have gusts over 50 miles per hour. So that just compounds what you were saying. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, power outage, you mentioned cleanup. Whiteland police tweeting out power lines down uh, everywhere, debris blocking the roadways. Uh, they are out in full force. Yeah, and I just saw them also tweet, not to interrupt you, that they're opening the high school as a shelter. Correct. Yeah, opening up Whiteland High School uh, mm -hmm. shelter for anyone that needs to use the restroom and get out of the weather. So um, that's where we are. Johnson County, uh, Morgan County. Th that, well, there's several, several counties where we've got um, cleanup underway here from a combination of tornado damage and a combination of straight line wind. Yeah, and you know, it's again, it's the middle of the night and yeah. we have, you know, a police department opening a high school for yeah. first responders to to be able to go in and get out of the weather, um, use the bathroom and or uh, community members that that may have uh, so much damage to their homes that they just need a safe place to go and wait out the darkness until we get into daylight. <sighs> yeah, and then <clears throat> as we've stressed, I mean, you know, we, it just you got to imagine that tomorrow the the and the thing about tomorrow is that it's not like what we had with tonight. That wind didn't last terribly long. It did the damage, but tomorrow the gust won't be 70 plus. But we are going to have gusts, strong ones, from start to finish tomorrow. It is going to be a persistent wind. And that is going to make things very, very challenging for the power crews. Um, because, as you mentioned, we're tens of thousands now. Those numbers may either hold steady or could go even higher uh, during the day today. So we've got, uh, yeah, just, uh, it's an unfortunate, uh, fortunate setup for sure. All right, we've got um, a photographer in the area. We're efforting some uh, live pictures, um, but from our photographer, Adam, he has spoken to Whiteland firefighters. They say several people uh, trapped, but they were able to get those trapped people out safely. Thank goodness. Uh, firefighters not sure about any injuries. Um, our photographer, Adam, says big trees have fallen on a couple of homes, front doors ripped off, roofs ripped, ripped off. Uh, this is just one area that is um, that is hard hit at this hour. And um, again, we have to remind ourselves that our first responders are out in the dark, in the middle of the night, getting people out of their homes that may have been trapped and, and hoping for um, if if any injuries that they're that they're minor at this point. Um, but really just the beginning of our team coverage. Our severe threat for the most part has ended across central Indiana. So we turn our attention to uh, first responders and cleanup and, and making sure everyone is, is safe tonight. So it, when we do get that live shot, we'll make sure that we get it to you. But in the Whiteland area, so in Johnson County, one county that has been very hard hit by storms this evening. Um, and it looks like we're going to have um, widespread damage across the area. So uh, just 
keep in mind, it's, it, again, it's the weekend, you're going to have places to go, but because of cleanup, because of damage, it's just probably going to take us a, a little longer to get where we're going as we head into the weekend. And, and Sean mentioned those uh, severe winds gusting 50 plus miles per hour tomorrow for a, a long duration of time. So additional power outages and additional damage possible. Will it be as widespread um, or as much as we're dealing with tonight? Probably not, but because of the duration of the event of the strong winds tomorrow, that's going to be a, a real issue as well. So we've got um, obviously several crews out in the field. And as I mentioned, we don't send them out uh, ahead of a storm. We make sure that they get into a spot where, where they're safe and then assess what has happened so that we can pass along information to you like what our photographer Adam has found in Johnson County in the New Whiteland area. Uh, we saw some pictures out of Martinsville of a brick church, looked like the steeple came down, um, and other parts of buildings with so much debris blown into, um, into the um, into the street. This is from Martinsville and there's the church that I mentioned. A, a brick church. So we're not talking about something that was, you know, poorly built or poorly constructed, but a brick, a brick church, steepled down, bricks blown into the road, and there's the other damage, whether that be um, part of uh, roofing material or siding or something, but completely blown into the area, covering that Jeep there. And this is just, um, these are a couple of the pictures that, uh, that we've had submitted so far. And because the damage is so widespread, it's going to take us a, a while to gather all of that. And reminder, we don't want you out in the middle of the night looking for pictures, trying to get video. It's best to stay out of those damaged areas and let first responders do what they need to do to, again, our, our main concern is to make sure everyone is safe. Things can be rebuilt. Uh, we just want to make sure everyone is uh, safe and accounted for. Sean. Yeah, and I'm just looking over. I was about to tweet out here what you were talking about. Um, you know, the, the, the wind gust that we are going to be dealing with here. Um, so we're, I'm going to start you out. This is the wind gust forecast. We're starting out at uh, 8 a.m. this morning. Um, over 40, we're, so we're going to have these gusts between 45 and 50. Now, the sustained wind is going to be 25 to 35 miles per hour. But we'll have, at times, these gusts of 45 to near 50 plus. And it is going to be a long duration. They're gonna, and they're, we're going to have those tonight, by the way, too. Um, there are, you know, wind advisory goes until 6 p.m. Saturday evening. And you can see these winds it's gusting uh, up until that point in time. So that just, um, that just aggravates the situation. It's going to aggravate the uh, cleanup and areas that didn't have power outages likely could. We'll see these numbers climb. Let's go. Let's get some live pics here from one of several communities that have been impacted by the storm. So this is Martinsville. One of our photographers, who, who's out there, Ashley, we, so we can look, give them credit. Josh is out there. Um, we appreciate Josh. Yeah. We appreciate all of our crew tonight. Um, so looks like this is an apartment complex. Josh is zooming in to show some of the windows. And I, Josh might be able to confirm for us that looks like the roof might be peeled back from that particular section mm. of that structure. And uh, some of the windows appear to be blown out as well. And, you know, and this is what you hate to see. You know, I, yeah, and it's why we say go to the lowest level, yeah, Sean. Yeah, and that's in that, an excellent point. Um, let's hope that no one is injured in that building. Uh, you can see the first responders there. And this is a scene that's going to be playing out over, you know, several communities. We've mentioned, mm -hmm. we've mentioned Whiteland. We've, mm -hmm. we've got Sullivan. Uh, we've got Fra Frankfurt. We've got Franklin. Uh, we've got parts of Howard County. And so what you're looking at now, this is from the super, well, I assume it's from the supercell that moved yeah. through and or the line. Either way, we mm -hmm. know that um, some folks are going to have to be looking for, um, for shelter uh, tonight, somewhere else to, to, to stay because of uh, the damage that you're seeing there in Martinsville. Yeah, and do, you know, and, what and, and strikes... Excuse me, Ashley, do we know what specific, um, what building that is there in Martinsville? Okay, 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 okay. What strikes me, Sean, is, you know, folks displaced, standing out in the rain, yeah. in the dark, yep. in the middle of the night. Um, so hopefully they have friends or family where they can, you know, spend the night safely tonight. Um, 
and, and be able to maybe get a couple of hours of sleep before they assess the damage tomorrow. But this, as Sean mentioned, is really just one of, of most likely will be a handful of communities with severe damage like this and then widespread additional damage from the strong winds that move through our really our entire area. So big thank you, Josh, for being out in the middle of the night in the rain and uh, and providing us the, the, those live pictures. And um, we've got crews uh, stationed all across central Indiana. Our coverage started at 930 this evening and, and really started earlier in the week when we let you know that today was going to be a day to stay weather aware. Well, today, yesterday, now, as we're into an early Saturday morning. And um, days like this, and in fact, I walked out of the newsroom meeting saying, I, I hope I'm wrong today. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't appear that that's the case. So we're going to have a a handful or more communities cleaning up in the coming days. Make sure your cell phone is charged. Um, allow extra travel time because as we saw backups um, on our on our interstates because of storm damage and there are going to be lots of, of of roads as well that are that have uh, trees or power lines down and so it's just going to take us a little longer to get where we're going first responders as we saw in that video uh, those live pictures that live video we just showed you are out in full force helping communities making sure that everyone is is safe uh, Sean we are set to get off at one o'clock here in about two minutes is there anything you'd like to say to as we start to wrap things up uh, yeah it looks like uh, we got a damage picture this is from uh, Tracy Bartek um, these are from her car. Oh, jeez. Um, and this is say, saying that they that they were hit by the storm, <sighs> driving on Whiteland Road about a mile east of US 31. Um, storm blew out the the window, set off the air. And it sounds oh like my gosh. she is extremely lucky. Uh, no one hurt. Definitely, as she says, she says she's shaken up, and I can understand why. That's wow. I I don't even know what to mm -hmm. say about that yeah. one. Th uh, you know, thankfully. Uh, Tracy is okay. Okay. Uh, because that's, you know, it, it, whether or not she got hit by the tornado. Um, well, did you see the grass blown yeah, into yeah, the grill yeah, in the front yeah. part of the car? Yeah, with the airbag deployment. So uh, we're thankful that she's okay. Um, and I uh, want to say thanks to all of our crew here, too. Um, it's, you know, it's unfortunately been one of those nights, but this is what we do, why we do. And um, let's just hope that we, you know, there's da we know there's damage. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that uh, we don't have uh, any serious injuries. And uh, we'll certainly have our crews on it tonight into tomorrow morning. Yeah, that was my thought as well. As we, you know, cover the severe storms, we, we hope that you, you get some information out of it, that you were prepared and that you knew it was coming. Um, and then in the end, we obviously hope that everyone is safe to make sure that if, if we do have in injuries, that they're minor, that... We know we've got damage that we can come together as a community and start to, to rebuild the areas that, um, that have been hit hard tonight. Our team coverage really is just beginning. It's going to continue all weekend long. Next up is sunrise in a matter of uh, five hours. And uh, just be safe tonight. Thanks for watching.